Uh, he's with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Our producer. Right. And inverted commas, heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. They, they, they know. They know. How are you doing, alright, Carl? Yeah, didn't they also write something about me, uh, bald round head? Yes, perfectly round with yeah. a bald man head, they said, so. Did you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that? <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, if you've, have you given it a little sort of polish, cause you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it, I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. <laughs> And also, he looks like you know when they say um, they find with a little four foot human, and it's actually half a million years old, and they give it a name, and it's got, and it's the first you know Australopithecus into. Uh, he looks like one of them as well, perfectly round. Oh, he is the missing link. He looks half human, half monkey. He's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. I he's know. Sort of in the middle. Yeah, and he's and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with, and it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything? Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, <coughs> sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, oh, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she always worries about when I have a shave, cause I, I just, uh, you know That's I mean? a girlfriend, Carl. I know. Saying that. that. Yeah. Just think. So don't worry about Heat saying it. And the th funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? Ah, <sighs> <sighs> bit boring, isn't it? But. <laughs> <you've gotta> <laughs> No, it'll be a great day for them, but I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and she'll get ideas and I'll have to let her down and all that. Why? Yeah. Yeah, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just it, who's it for at the end of the day? I've been with Suzanne for eleven years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what the case. You're and, never happy. I am. I'm all right. Yeah, no, I you're, know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed, but I'm always happy. I was annoyed here, I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffling his feet, he had a pair of those stupid skulls on, and he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes, you don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip-flops annoy me. Mm. You know? But I'm happy, I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great, it's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there, <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be locked yeah, in the fairy towers, so, cos everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm all right. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Cause Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet. Here's the only ones. Another girl on another planet by the only ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, Dr. Fox disagreed with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Another yeah. great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking it, I'm not knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your uh, favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. Let me just get my, I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a golfing a day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Oh. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. 
Well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, as if right. the president was playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf event. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Um, sorry, it wasn't a romantic meal. <laughs> no, no, but that's what, that's that was my <laughs> immediate thought. Was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. <laughs> it it was... just seems like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> 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 but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know. I know. Go, <laughs> go, go. go. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so <laughs> I chose Carl. Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Well, we, uh, he bought, he, we, he bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could have, I'd love to have seen him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes, we had to change them, he was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over £22 on his, <laughs> these golf shoes. <laughs> uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just, it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me and you were a bit scared. Yeah. What, what, I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go, stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went, like, reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had, we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> what's the tree, right? He was, he was, <laughs> so. Jeeps of hazard. <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you yeah, want to look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> he teased up that. And I've been saying, buy some balls. He just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, <laughs> he tees up, right? Whacks it. It goes miles, like right angles, straight into these, uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around and he goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing, because it's like impolite to laugh. But he, he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around. And then second shot, I go, you know you're off a three now. If you take another shot, he went, oh, right. So it's his third shot. He puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it and misses the ball off the <laughs> And I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and we were the terrible. Purpose. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or something. Sure. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What oh, annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, you and I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. Lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. <laughs> There's no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. he fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out <laughs> for four and a half hours, right? Uh, right. And my life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache, you're going for your run, I'm gonna have a bath. I walk in, put the light on, for some reason it didn't come on but I thought, it's alright, I'll just uh... You know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. It's summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so, yeah. <laughs> so you're in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, hassling me. So I say, well, I won't. Uh, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because, you know, I haven't got like long hair. I've got a dryer and sure. I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late though when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is lateness. Oh, next. Doesn't matter. Dinner mm. wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had like another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up. Hurry up, hurry up. So I said, yeah, all right. So I get out and try and like me tackle and what have you. <laughs> calls back again thirty seconds later. Still, you know. No, I don't. No? You know, you I don't, don't like know, that. You better wipe. Thirty seconds later. Come on. So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area naked with a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Maybe be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is very, re very nice. Can't and then, we're, it. then we're sitting yeah. in the bar. I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like we're having a, a rather nice uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going like an ink. It's just like <laughs> 55 that you live in. <laughs> <laughs> It's so right. And we, we are knackered because you know uh, he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf course. We had a buggy. Yeah. It wasn't even exercise. So, we get onto conversations. He's talking about, he's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about he, what's the, tell me that. Why, why did the giraffe, what, what's that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? I said, well, it didn't, it didn't try and get a long neck. It, it was selected. And he said, but, why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. It won't have a long enough neck to survive and pass it. He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? <laughs> now, this, this, this yeah. isn't, but by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is, uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Okay. Right? He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. We get on to. Uh, I said. Well, the things are. Uh, I said. Uh, um, uh, we can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses. They evolved. Uh, that's why um, uh, soon we won't have an antibiotic um, that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said. And this is about um, half eleven. And I said, I'm going to bed. Right. He said, in the future. They reckon that you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's put a song on, right? No, and we'll come back to so it. So you're because... going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. The yeah. Verve and Sonic on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Perkinson. So let's just get this right. What did Carl say? He's just specifically he said, his words He again. said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said, I'm going to bed. He went, no, really, I said, no, I'm going to bed, Carl. There's no point now, because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like you're talking gobbledygook. You know what I mean? I might as well talk to a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are. <laughs> sure. I don't know, people who post things on the internet that he oh, reads, no, I think. Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love you. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, yeah. like this little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, darling. It's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt. You can have a chat with. All right. Well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right. It's when I was away on holiday, right? I got. Uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? So, but, uh, they were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought- Ding dong. Might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, and I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future, and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think- You can't, you can't evo- it, 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 by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's not successful. It can't pass on its uh, genetic material. Or, uh, but it, it, if if you're around, you, it's working. If you're around, it's working. Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs are as evolved as you. And well, me. that's true enough. No, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, around. But, but what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, because there's more water than land, isn't there? Right. And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can imagine. I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it went, it, do you know what I mean, from, well, what well, was it? Talk. It was bacteria, it was yeah. fish, mermaid, man, <laughs> onwards and what have you. So anyway. <laughs> oh, so God! Oh, oh God! No, there there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, no, uh, you generally got it right, though. So yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, it, it went, it went bacteria, fish, mermaid, man. Um, <laughs> so what, I, what next is the big question? <laughs> so, oh. so it was telling you all about this and what I've been saying now. Like, uh, we shouldn't have interfered because maybe if we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you, maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you. Sure. If we really yeah. needed to and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, we, so we've interfered with with mm. evolution, you see. Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future got? Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, ev uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can, uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's, it, 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 there are different parameters, uh, there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on genetic material or not. Okay. So in that sense you're right. And but that, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yogurt that you can eat and have a conversation <laughs> with. So yeah, this, this is what it was saying. It was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that. You sure. know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is. Go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up 
Go on. Have a chat with your yogurt and have something to eat. What do you mean, have a chat with your yogurt? Because of the amount of, I mean, you have them yogurts already, those friendly yogurts. Those bacteria friendly ones, so this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, they don't <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Sometimes, Carl, I think that we're having a chat with the yogurt. Do you know what I mean? I there, there can't be any difference. Uh, uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> that would be more informative. God! You two, City of Blinding Lights. I'm gonna see you next week. Yeah. Well, enjoy yeah. that. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again for letting me know about your, uh... Old Nobbo and, and Edge and yeah. all that. Now listen, you just got an email there saying, can you turn up uh, your microphone, Steve. Apparently my voice is a little bit, uh, quiet. Carl has to do one thing, make sure we're heard. That's yep. all he has to do. Well, I can hear it. Sounds fine to me. Mm. Well, not to the listeners, and that's who we're trying to please. Well, yeah. it's one person, so they can't hear Yes, but we've only got one listener. <laughs> so yeah. he's not happy. <laughs> we're buggered. <laughs> You're allowed to say buggered. Um. Mm. Not twice, certainly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, one's could have been a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Twice, pointing it out, is definitely, yeah, complaint material. Now, Carl. Carl, you haven't uh, told us about your holiday yet. You were meant to do it last week and you didn't. Uh, you started yes. on this but we didn't have time because we had to do monkey news about a monkey who was a director who cared about lighting and stuff. Mm. Is there but, more monkey news this week? Uh, yep. is it as- uh, uh, okay. Is there- uh, is it real monkey news? C did it happen or is it mostly embellishment in your round little head? It's proper stuff. Yeah, okay, it's good. It's so holiday, where'd you go on holiday? Uh, Sardinia. Good? Yeah, it's alright, yeah. Uh, nice food and that. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, nice beaches and what have you. Excellent. Oh, it's like a nice long beach to walk down. Yeah. But, uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? You know how, uh, nudists do me heading? Sure. <laughs> right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chick uh, chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not a big problem being... I mean, I'd done it by nudists. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me, it sort of ruins the day a little bit. Cause it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, well <laughs> anyway, right, so I'm walking along the beach, right, lovely long beach, what have you, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are you, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's like on all fours going, <laughs> yeah. like that, you know what I mean, looking at things. <laughs> <laughs> Just like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get the, to get them tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've just got, you know, flip flops on, pair of shorts, Something and, uh, a, bit and like a little, a little light shirt. Sure. Mm. So anyway, walking along, and, uh, Suzanne goes, oh look, right, and there's this woman, German I think, uh, coming out of the- How can you tell she was German? Under well, arm hair? I'll get to it. Forget okay. the under arm hair. <laughs> <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was <laughs> smuggling seaweed. <laughs> I'm right. going to burst! Oh god! And, and the, f the funny thing is, right? <laughs> she, uh. <laughs> I just smuggling seaweed! Oh god! She, she, uh, she was a bit hairy down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days. Right? Looked at her. Just. It was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she was wearing furry trunks, right? <gasps> so anyway. Oh god! So I'm walking around. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, go on in. So Suzanne's like, oh look, and I'm like, oh, not again. You know, because every time we go away, there always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself, this woman? Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right? Oh, yeah. But he had shorts on, he yeah. was happy, right? Yeah. But every time, like, because I walked past her and he sort of ran off, because he's, he's embarrassed. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing normal about it. How, what can he do? He can't go, all right, mate? Because he knows it's, it's odd, right? How so old was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? <sighs> it's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on. Sure. You know what I mean? It's they, they always look older, don't they? When when they haven't got clothes on anyway. But I'd say she was about forty, forty one. Okay. Right. So um, so yeah. So I walked past, and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right? No clothes on. Little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that takes more effort for me putting boots on. But put the shorts on. Right. right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. 
I walked past <laughs> and, and I, I'm getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. I love the fact that they're scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of, um, sort of iron <laughs> sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists <laughs> run away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, but no, so, so, we sort of come walking back and what have you and, and, you know, I have a, have another look and what have you and he runs why up again. Why are you having another look if it offends you so much? Oh, you might as well just, just have a look, you know what I mean? It's just putting it on show and what have you. But yes. the interesting thing was that I just wondered whether the, the husband- Cause If I, the husband were renewed, you'd have looked at his tackle, cause remember when you went to see those two strippers and it was a woman and a man and they whipped their shorts off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. Wow. You would. You just check it out, it's natural, innit? You just go, oh, right. <laughs> well, it is normal or whatever. Cause you don't know if you, you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go but on. anyway, so, um, but he got us talking because I was, then, soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> it's been ruined! Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Do you know what I mean? Why do people do this? What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it and what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much, uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I'm thinking that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> I'd, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, I'm what? wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist, you know, one of those official nudist spokespeople, you know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, I in his mind, they are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some resort or whatever and for, just for the nudes sure. and that. And it's Were just- Were playing that. volleyball? Well, the annoying thing was, bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? Well, don't play a sport where you got to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young from the album Zuma, and that's, uh, Pardon My Heart, on Beautiful. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We just had a, a text here that says, and I don't know what the truth there is in this, as ever, but John says there is apparently a nude bike ride today mm. in Hyde Park. Now, I can't believe that's the case, because I don't think it's allowed, is it? You can't ride around with your, your veg, know. can you? I don't know. Why would you want to? Well, it's a good point. On a bike. <laughs> on a bike, I love the fact that that's what disgusts him. I, 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 I want, do you know what, if we did appeal for a nudist to call in, I'd want a very specific sort, I don't want to, I want, I want a German nudist, a middle-aged man called Helmut. Okay. If there is any, or the closest one to it. So, I want a middle-aged man from Germany, if your name is Helmut, you're in, but I'll accept, I'll accept Hans, um, Carl would be good, okay. isn't it? All right. Yeah. I think I'm. I'm wondering if the age might. Maybe we could. Could we? Could we broaden? Okay. That a just bit? a German. A German nudist bloke. Right. Could he at least be fat? <laughs> okay. Could I find a fat German fella? If your name's Helmer, we're going to give you a big prize. Yeah. But you know, any fat German fella who likes to get his sausage out. Sure. Okay. It's so okay. Yeah. What's the phone number? Uh, oh eight seven one. Triple two one oh four nine. It'd be good just to get an email or a text over the contact line, and okay. then I can just call them up in the week. Sure. And uh... Eighty three nine three six is the uh, text number. I think, I mean, I don't know what our, um, our audience demographic pans out like, Rick, but I'm suspecting that's probably a fairly small fraction of our listenership. The, I uh, know, but you know, there German must be someone out there, so you know a fat German who likes to get his tackle out of phones to go in. Straight away, away, straight away. Just answer it, Carl. Just answer it. Just pop no, that. It could just be anything. Well, it just no, see it what be, it is. To be fair, it could be a nutter. It could be a nutter. But it just say hello. Just if no, your turn is nutter straight away. On, it'll stay there, won't we? It'll stay there. We'll answer it. Uh, answer leave it. it. Leave it. Answer it. Oh, you see this? It's gone. It's gone. There you go. He bottled it. So, just as well. Well, you took too long to answer it. There's a vicar in uh, <laughs> Australia who's who started sort of doing his services and all that. And nude. Hot, isn't it, out there? Yeah, well, you get the churches, churches aren't. Churches are pretty cold. 
<laughs> I th- it was on, uh, on some website. Of course just, it was, yep. Just saying about, uh, a vicar and that who's, uh, there's a lot of nudists and that who want to get married. Do it, you know, you know, don't mess about with the wedding dress and that, just snip up. Jeez. Well, well, also, I suppose it's so, uh, I suppose if you believe in God, you believe that, uh, that's the way to be in it, because Adam and Eve and that. Yeah, but then in Adam and Eve, they, the shame made us uh, dress up, didn't it? Yeah. Eating the apple and things. Yeah, but God didn't want that, did he? No, he wanted to see it all. He was loving it. <laughs> he was aware of some getting a life full of all of that, and then they, the snake, the snake cover yourself up. Stitched, stitched him right up. Yeah. So if you believe in God, which clearly I don't, do you believe in God, Carl? Uh, don't know. I don't really worry about it. It was ages ago, wasn't it? So you know, if he's about whatever, whatever, not that bothered. Adam and Eve is pretty interesting, though, isn't it? It's not, well, how, how is it interesting? He made he made he made man made uh, out of dust. Then he cause, just because he could, he's having a laugh. Um, then he made uh, her out of his, one of his ribs again. He'd like to vary it a little bit. Then they had two sons. Uh, which gave rise to the entire human race. What was going on there then? What would have happened if they didn't get on? <laughs> that's interesting. Sometimes with pandas they don't fancy the other one, do they? They go, well that's my choice, one. You've brought me one panda from Lisbon Zoo and I've got to chag that. What if I don't fancy it? What if they bring in the right, a right slapper? Do you think that What if it's the equivalent of like, um, uh, uh Love Island, whatever well, it's called. I it was like Celebrity Love Island. Yeah. And they're going, I am not shagging that slapper. Every, every panda in the world has seen that dirty old mott in magazines. Why am I meant to mate with it? I've got some dignity. Are you talking about Adam there or Panda? Was that- Um, or I, I, I go as fire, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, so, bad do you think that Adam had any say? When God was making Eve, was he saying, can make, make the boobs a bit bigger, would you? And then, I'm sort of, I'm a blonde guy, I'm into blondes, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, did he have any input or was it just- I don't know. Well, I suppose it's- It was uh, one of his ribs, I know, but he's probably restricted. You go, well, I'm, I'm working with a rib, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break, there's only so many things I can do. Well, he's probably- he's probably in kind of intensive care, wasn't he, with well, the whole- They go, well, I can't just keep making the boobs and things bigger, because their legs will get short, I don't mind short they, legs. They, yeah, they yeah, the legs I, I don't mind no legs. I don't mind no legs. As long as the boobs are sizable. <laughs> i tell you- i tell you what's weird, though, Steve, right? Everyone's heard of, like, Adam and Eve, yeah? What's the surname? Yeah, where'd they get their post from? Unbelievable. Now listen, before you play the next tune, we should just, uh, we were trying to mop up some stuff from the last couple of shows which we haven't dealt with yet. One of which is an obsession of yours because you're, we're on a radio station, Ricky and I come in, we bring in CDs, music we love, it means so much to us, we adore it. You don't really care about music, you, you work at a radio station, it's just, eh, uh, you know, I don't no, care. I do, I do. No, I do. you don't. I do like a good track. I don't like everything that comes out and everyone raves about. Yeah, you thought the iPod wasn't worth it because you you, got, you named the five tracks you'd like. What was it? It was In the Ghetto, Babushka, Living in the City, what was the other one? Uh, Killing a Georgie, and there was one other one or something, and you just only like songs with a story. Yeah, but then there's a reason to listen to it, isn't there? Well, not only once. Going on. No, because you might forget the ending. Listen to it again. Yeah, anyway, you might, we, yeah. You've been listening to Babushka quite a lot, is that right? Because you've, you've really got into your head now, you're trying to decipher well, the when story. Well, I've been sort of asking for songs with stories, people have texted and emailed in and whatever, and I've had, I've had a couple, you know, last time we did the show. So I've gone, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Uh, and Babushka, when I was away on holiday, I listened to it a few times because I like the story. It's a good little story going on. You've got some thoughts on it there, have you? Uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll have a listen well, to let's it. Well, let's have a listen to the track and then I know you've got some queries you'd like to raise. It's just about a, f- a woman in it who, uh, I don't know, she's ugly or something, aged badly, and her husband gets bored with her. Have a listen to it, then. Right. XFM. You're listening to Magic 105.4. All the way back to 1979. Kate Bush Babushka. <laughs> So, um, we yeah, would like your suggestions for songs which have stories in them, which, um, may entertain Carl. They could shoot to the top of his list. What do you think of that, Carl? That has a, has a, a little story there. Uh, I like it, but... So she, she tests her husband, yeah, she writes him letters, she gets a letter back, it's a pseudonym, Babushka's her pseudonym, it's not her real name, her real name is, uh, uh Molly Strank. <laughs> from Ealing, um, <laughs> and, uh, Eva responds, he goes, oh, he's, he's, he's you know, so, uh, in real terms, he's, he's having a bit of a, an illicit affair behind her back, because he doesn't know it's his wife, so he goes, oh, well, I'll take this a bit further, see how far I go. He turns up, 
She turns up, she, you know, gets it on with her, and he's falling for her because she's acting like she used to act, you know. It's, yeah, it's, was yeah. he just playing along with it? Was he like a no? No, no, he's not, because they'd have said that in the song. They don't leave well, it up to- Some people that, do like, don't they? Well, it wasn't. Kate okay, Bush would have said, and by the way, he's playing along. She'd have given us a clue. He's not. He's fallen for it. <laughs> She went long incognito. He thought it was another woman. But how much work can you do to yourself to, if, say, say, if, like, uh, <sighs> I, I wrote a letter to Suzanne, yeah. right? Saying, She'd uh, know it was you. It'd have egg stains on it. It'd be spelt wrong. No, but, and you'd but, sign you know, it Carl, crossed out uh, Babushka. I wrote to, uh, I won't pick Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a ridiculous name. That wouldn't have worked anyway. You just get a vision in your head of. I wouldn't have answered a letter from someone called Babushka. <laughs> 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 it's not the point. If Kate Bush is listening, please call in because I'd love her to have a conversation <laughs> with you. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. Forget Helmer. No, no, Helmer, you keep trying. A fat German. We want Kate Bush and a fat German. What I mean is, though. Now, wait a minute. What worries me is he didn't answer the last phone call. What if Kate Bush does for <laughs> Well, if anyone Chris knows, if anyone knows Kate Bush, give her a call now. She's probably not listening. She's probably doing yoga or something, I imagine, or making a, a lentil soup, or, or maybe just like repotting some plants, right? But or practicing piano, right? But if anyone knows Kate Bush, she's got a number. Call her up now. Say, tune into XFM. There's a little bald mank fella wants to talk to you about babushka, right? No, but but how much? But how much? Don't worry. You'll 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 get your. Chant. The how, phone's going. How that could be Kate that Bush. Bush. You that that it's could, not, don't worry about it. It's that could Bush. be Kate Bush. Oh, I know for a fact it isn't. Uh, okay, uh, answer yeah. it. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, utterly random. Yeah. Well, as you said before, Tenuous, you really just, just trying to really think cryptic. of something yeah. that he might sure. be thinking of. Sure, sure, So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, all right? Go on. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep. You know, but like Hollyoaks is on the omnibus. I'm just watching that. You know, um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea. You know, in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I having a cup of tea? What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that. But hang on, I haven't got anything to dunk in me uh, in my tea. I'm got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? Yeah, you know I mean, I've got anything to dunk in there. I'm just having, you know, what what am I doing? Is That's, it LB? It's L R. Oh, L R. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah, Do you? go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of lying in Lionel, and it's like no, no rich tea, no, no rich, rich tea. tea. Yeah, no biscuits, no rich tea. Lying, no rich tea. Lionel Rich tea. Lionel Richie. It works. It's, it was just done just one, just just one a bit What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's no wrong with that. I cannot so believe you got that's it. A, that's a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chucked them in, just to help you along. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so what have you got for us right, this so week? We've got, we've got three of them. Oh, we've by the way, them. don't bother calling in Kate Bush, because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's all going to be nutters, so we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right, because someone's complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now, so I don't know, I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays, because he works Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks holiday. Oh, Year, not off Mondays and, and, and Andy moans. Not off Mondays. Wow. Well. <laughs> right, uh. Um, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh. There's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? <laughs> there, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. <laughs> you what? You are. You are. You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again, what's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, nah, I don't go against it. Right? I've yeah, I've got it. Is so it initials W O Y O? Yeah, got it. All right, so okay. Yeah. That uh, one. That one works. Mm. 
it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just uh, text or email in uh, with the answers and uh, win some stuff. What have yeah. we got? We've got some prizes. We've got uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This um, is instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So what have we got today? Yeah, well today, this is what you're taking home today. Oh. Uh, you've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is uh, good. The Aviator, the um, the award-winning um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic, and once again, Ladder Forty Nine. We're we'll giving that away again, are we? Yeah, yeah. Apparently oh, we got. Um, can we get a job like those? We? we got loads of them. Oh, yeah. excellent. Email so well. in if you just want a copy of Ladder 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the ha signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But in Lloyd Carl won't. Oh, Never wrote anyone, has it? Has it? Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting site of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> Are they against wearing an helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to, trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Well, it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be, you gonna be popping, popping down there and cheering them on? I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think, you know, generally we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world, and it's gonna run out one day, and we've not got any alternatives. Uh, talking of, um, uh, campaigns and, uh, things and that, um, did you see, uh, um, Sir Bob on, um, Jonathan Ross last night? Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you gonna walk to, uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, he's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but, Probably won't, won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work in XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm just saying, is uh, it's, it's good that he's. he's Giving up a lot of his time to, you know, try and save the world and that, but, you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like, you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right. Well, what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's he tried it before. And no, 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 wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think, the seven most uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can they can wipe out the the third world debt. Mm. I.e., they, they owe us billions and billions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say, let's, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think of that? But, won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's you thinking? No, I just mean- I knew, I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know- look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you. But I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <coughs> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go can I have some more money? And she goes, we gave you a quid before. And I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with- That's, with, a, with that's with a nice, nice conflict. metaphor. So what do you think happening there, that the Africans are, uh, are nice blowing it down the arcade? <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade. They're trying to, they are trying, I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals. I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. 
I just That's what Bob said. Yeah, Bob said, you're never going to get the Snoopy. You're never going to get the it's Snoopy. It's always going to fall out of the little claw. The, the, the claw top. is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste them. No, oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge. Midge, write a song. Write another song, mate. They've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So Martin. that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know, uh... I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a-, it's a Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London- Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Saturday- easy. Yeah, don't worry, Carl is not gonna be put in charge of G8. It's not gonna be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> That would be Brilliant. a joy if it that were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what, in one, some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously, it's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's, uh, what, what are you, what are you gonna do? You're, you're the only, you know, the only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, haven't we? We've sent, yeah. you know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have it. you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads for charity. Go on. No, oh, loads. I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Oh, what? Oh, I'll give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean? Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads <laughs> of charities, I do loads of things like, uh- Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver. Paying right. for, uh, you know, toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? Because, um, do you know this, do you know this thing I do, Steve, right? No. This is, this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got, got, I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold, are you gonna help her out? <laughs> so I was like, oh, why me, right? <laughs> so anyway. So, they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So- Why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called, I don't know, call her name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So- <laughs> It does to her, but go on. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little, uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and, and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up, and, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you, and you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> So he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm, you know, they meant a week in New York or whatever. And this is, this is what I mean, people turn, if they can get away with it. That I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go though. I've what do you think, so what do you think, you think they're going, don't, don't bother, don't bother, um, getting a job or anything, go off a bit, isn't it? Go off a bit, it's June, oh, I don't isn't know, it? I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So oh. you think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time, is that what you're saying? So oh. you should just leave them to it. Just leave them to it, let them sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just carry, oh, just think, carry on. Do you know what this? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not a little birds in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that, do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up, do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads I of- I don't reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, but people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that, right? <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. Ad. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would Hammer. Be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. Oh. What's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. Right? I'm not gonna go. I'll go through the phones. It's mental. <laughs>
Right. Play a record. Right, what we having? Bit of, uh, bit of Killers? Yeah. The Killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh, Oh yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um, you must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out, I think he's been trying to get there for a while and, uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything, right? And, uh, well, it's got to be here, you're walking straight in. He can always walk straight in with that, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, me and Jane went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world, okay? Right. And, um, it was incredible. I mean, it's a cross between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. do, you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or it feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that one of their, um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I was thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, uh, they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful, um, and, uh, it was, it was, it was really quite fantastic, and and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which was more of a risotto, and there's taste in menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan, halfway through, on the way there, I don't like to travel well. On the way there, he actually <laughs> phoned me and said, "Why?" Are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver school dinners <laughs> program. <laughs> who's, he's got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille. Yeah. But they're going for the sort of chicken Twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm squeamish about red meat. There's nothing I've, uh, you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, um, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or it's But it hasn't got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you talking about? I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely, gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses. Always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it in the, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, you know, Late sixties, early seventies, came round to your place in Reading. It would have just been the smell of chip fat, oh, just on. everywhere, chip pervading. Fat just on. one of those chip fat fires that's just yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day. I used to eat things. I away. used to eat beef and pork and that. And uh, it, it, I used to have to eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather anyway. <laughs> where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or so. A salad so, in your house would have been. I'll a, tell you what, a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right? It was in the summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, great. <laughs> Grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion, and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was, that was, uh, that was a salad. But- yeah. Now is uh, that, is that, do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this, 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 this palate? And I don't even, it's not no, even a palate, I've, that's I've, too I've, nice I've, a word I've to I've got more it. squeamish as I've got older, because I say, I, I used to, I used to eat beef but and pork and- what do you mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean. Squeamish is fish, think about it. I can eat, I, I can eat like, you know, like, it has to be blasted, it has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just <laughs> fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going. I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take the head off, cook, cook really cook, take the skin off. I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, he'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But lunchtime, would why you? would I spend? You'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. 
There's no one out there who's eating lunch, twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime. Cause we- I don't know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger green curry for lunch, you're asleep by one thirty. we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep, and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat- Carl, he does not like the spare- he, he- he'll go- he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for- I've been in an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> Again, Here's the situation, Carl. Yeah. I lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. Nah, it's the way that you were, like... I said, where's my 50p? You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision at all. I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever. Rubbish. And he's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. Mm. He's just given him a keg of beer for free, hasn't he? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just- I just think that value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. Alright, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, I just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30 and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, It's anything. madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I If I there mean, was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh if they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's true, I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah, is the case. Yeah, okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I feel fl- I, if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. Carl, what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever, you can't say, oh, I'll just Ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation. Depends. Most of the time I've got to get him work early. I can't be hanging around to half But you don't know, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've called him long as a film he was at. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day. He went away, he fell asleep at, um, quarter to eight yeah. in the bath because he was knackered. So, yeah. you know, he has five weeks on the year. Oh, he's taking the piss. Yeah. Feeder. Pushing the senses. Quite food related. Sort of, uh, show, isn't it? It is. It? Yeah, thinking of gluttony, did you Just see in, uh, <laughs> I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's um, lost five stone, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was, um, I used to eat, uh, twelve packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. Twelve packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you got to eleven packets and you're thinking, one it's more, a, do it's it. a bit packish. One more, do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. But <laughs> someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories. You know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared twenty-three stone. Um, they what, uh, none of them died. Between the five of them, oh come on, between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus, well, how many are there though? They spent five of them, and they spent three hundred pounds a week on food. Um, uh, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Um, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't, um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it says here, <laughs> it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition <laughs> still going? He, br <laughs> he <sighs> broke five bikes. He broke five bikes by, uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Who wow. knows, maybe now he's on that new dirt uh, bike ride, you know, cause he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that, wouldn't that it? Would if one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, another food related, uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via, um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, sent, sent from someone at, um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought, um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for 
ridicule on the show. Don't panic. It's nothing that bad. Okay. It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the uh, an England game or something? Yeah. So you you were alone. You were home alone where you went tonight. Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for thirty minutes on one hundred and ninety. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado. <laughs> Chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice, place on salad, put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing, right, in brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Everything out of the way. Right. Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove keys from oven. Cut into quarters and put on plate. <laughs> Eat. Oh wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every like... single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking. Right. Um, and to be honest, that that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that with instructions. It was too much. But, um, oh. yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that good at cooking. And did that, you genuinely? Um, that's not cooking, though, is it, Carl? That's that's, that's heating up a quiche. That's good. cooking. It is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm I'm just. Kind do, of do you? One. Could you have figured that? Out? <laughs> Shoot, I left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, oh, it's a bit... <laughs> it's ever since, I'm right, year, years ago... I'm gonna die! Years ago... Oh, God, it, like leaving Mr. Magoo at home! It was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. <laughs> that, uh, oh, God, what I do you a, mean? I nearly set what the flat on fire. Because, do you know like when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> So I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Put them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, They got stuck and they sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and what have you came in from work. She said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, oh, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know, they're in here. <laughs> what, you just turn it off? They're panicking and that. But <laughs> I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking <laughs> and that. At school and oh, stuff, I didn't bother doing it. Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner. Oh, God. She comes and goes, oh, God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. Unbelievable. But I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare for oh, they, 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 they can do it. Yeah, you show them once. Yeah, no, they, 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 they Whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, they, and they, they learn don't, it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What do they, they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we doing, uh, Rockbusters on Sunday? Oh, yeah, let's play a song. It's we'll what play, London's we'll, waiting for. I'll tell you what, we'll play a song and do, do Why Rockbusters, not? Yeah. It's worth waiting Plus, for. Have we still got Monkey News to come? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Roxy Music with the, uh, the old Dylan classic Hard Rains on XFM 104.9. Rock mixing it up, just mixing it up, oh, mixing and matching. We've got, yeah, we, um, we've got a bit of, uh, Roxy music, we don't care, do we? But they were right up, bang up today with some of the latest tracks from Feeder and the like, so. Yeah, 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 yeah big time. <laughs> but, uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, right. Okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> There's a, there's a vehicle over there that's, uh, it's changed. selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed. Go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah, what is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. That Good. Works. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second that's a one. real clue. Mm. Well, they got it. Like they always do, so they're yeah. always real clues. Mm. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this, um, uh, uh John Lennon's, um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was Yoke Ono. That, that was, yeah. It was Yoke Ono. No, 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 no. Oh, you've got no. it wrong. You're thinking about it. You asked if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go, Yoke? 
You think about it. Oh. Oh no. Oh, so you say it twice, you stutter. So no, it's no, Yoke, no, no. Yoke, oh, oh no. no, you, you no my name's Yoko, oh no, though. Yeah, Yoko, yeah. oh no. Listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You think, oh, what, the other bit? No. Yoke, oh, oh 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 no, no. Oh, yoke. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, Yoke, oh no, yeah, go on, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 next, next, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one was, uh, I don't think this burger will catch on. That was, uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which, which three it won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever. Mac, Mac chicken. McFly. <laughs> don't want one. Put it back. I'll have a chicken. <laughs> right? So who's, who's got the oh. who's got the three then? Well, well done to uh, Ian Shillam <laughs> from Mansfield, who's uh, got all those answers right amazingly. Uh, and he go he wins all those great prizes, including uh, Ladder Forty Nine, starring Joaquin Phoenix mm. and John Travolta, which I don't think anyone's ever seen. Mm. There's Forty Nine of them. <laughs> and, so. um, and he wins that, but he also goes forward, as you say, to the big draw, which will come up at the uh, end of the uh, It's to run. win the signed, uh, Homer saying, I like Carl because he's stupid like me, and you can see Matt Groening drawing that, to know it's real on, uh, rickyjavaze.com, and you can win that, and a signed Nigel Tufnell poster. Brilliant. It's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM Sugar, if I can't change your mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, oh chimpanzee that! Monkey news. <laughs> So, right. Monkey News, if you've, uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, Monkey News is where Carl, um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone only overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He <laughs> believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA this happened, right? I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. <laughs> Is one of them short and hairy but it goes, <laughs> totally covers from top to bottom in a space suit so he didn't know it was a monkey? It's uh, not one of the customers, one of the waiters? So, th so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners that they've, they've had, right? Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that, uh, had a lovely meal and that. Right, it's the chef. Of <laughs> course it is. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so <laughs> can, can we just, you know, see, see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Short fella, hairy. So, the waiter, the, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hadn't really got time. He said, it only took a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So this is a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So he <laughs> sends for, so, uh, monkey Pierre White. So it's a bit <laughs> odd, anyway. <laughs> So, so they go, so they go out, right? they go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen doors open. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course they do, because they're, they're gonna discover something that I don't know. So they they're just- gonna Hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm. like to eat, yeah, um, um, um so well, anyway, so, uh, so they pop their head in and think, we'll just, we'll just nip in and go, yeah, you know, love, love, love fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they step their head the human, We better see the human chef. <laughs> yeah. You never guess what. Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, cooking veg. <laughs> <laughs> right, so anyway, so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Questions. What do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the, by the cooker and he's, yeah. uh, chopping, stu chopping stuff. Oh, he's, up, he's chopping as well, no? He's just like isn't it? Yeah. It's got a little, uh, you know, he's, he's got the, the bosses in there, they're, they're like a bit shocked. So he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, what's going on here? We didn't know this, this is what's going on, you know, you, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff? So he said, well, the it's really a monkey, I should point out, who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend. <laughs> oh, forget it. Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Alright. Alright? Carl's had a bad week. I'm gonna say that straight away. There's a, it's a, He's, he tries to rule out stress in his life, yeah. but he's had a bit too much stress this week, haven't you? One, a phone call from his mum, stressed him a little bit. Right. Um, something he said in a magazine about his auntie. Okay. Came back to haunt him. Auntie Nora. Uh, auntie Nora, yep. yeah. Don't name her. <laughs> oh, no, she don't knows name. who she is. No, no. Okay, we won't name her, 
right? We just say it's the it's the one who fighted for five minutes and as um he sort saw a skirt when he was young and a fanny like a split tennis so ball. So it could be any of me on these. <laughs> <laughs> that coming up, and also a bloke um, in Times Online, um, Chris Campling, yeah. did a review of the show, right, and basically said that Carl Pilkington is a creation of Gervais and Merchant. Well, if only that were the case. He, he said um, he started off saying he liked the show. Yeah, he was excited. Said it was a good show. Um, a lot of the, uh, jokes. I'm already- I'm already questioning his critical faculties. <laughs> yeah, exactly! And, uh, basically said that, um, uh, we didn't contribute much, or seemingly didn't seem to contribute much, and sure. I- and we- we couldn't sort of, like, uh, ad-lib or anything, we just laughed at, uh, particularly me, uh, laughed at, um, Carl Pilkington, who was coming up with some, you know, quite funny stuff, yeah. right? But then he does a twist on it, he goes, but the thing is, we're the puppet masters. He's a created person. We've created the, uh, um, persona Carl Pilkington for our own amusement. Right. He bases this on simply that we talked about, what was it we talked about? Um, the Chinese not aging well, and right. you heard him talk about that on my DVD. But clearly I, I say, Carl, remember when you were talking about that? It's a news, or remember in the week, and so he thinks it's all scripted now. Imagine if this show was scripted. I'd be ashamed. Yeah. If this show was scripted, I would send back the BAFTAs for the shows we've- the actual shows we've written, and I would and say- I'm not having a go at Chris Campling, he's, he's nice about our other work, he likes The Office, and yeah. he likes my stand-up and everything, and he likes the show, but he's saying, because we, we're not spontaneous, we, we scripted this and invented Carl. It, so he's, he's like, you know, we, we've invented another Gareth. If we had created Carl, I would, I would not have squandered a character that good on this poxy radio station. Absolutely. Also, does he know that we spend about three months on half an hour script? So how long does two hours of trouble? But the main thing is, as if this could be scripted, it's dreadful. <laughs> it's just shocking. Or maybe this is scripted. Hang on, you've, you've lost me now. Let me just well, check maybe, it. maybe Chris Campling does not exist. Uh, maybe I've made him up. I don't know what to believe. See, the name, the name doesn't wash with me. What was his name? Chris Campling. Sounds, sounds odd. That's something that I made up, isn't Campling's it? Campling's almost like, it's almost like a joke, it's almost like a gay name, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Campling. See, I think this is scripted. Yeah. I think I've probably made this whole link up, and Carl is a creation. Campling, that's not a real name. No. I made it, I should've come up with something better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Down to the River by Bruce Springsteen on XFM 104.9. So, uh, yeah, a little fella in the Times thought Carl was just a puppet. We created him, he's an actor. What's the, what was his, what's his act, what's his actor's name? Um, Brent Hogwell. <laughs> we, yeah, we got him from, we got him from, uh, a spotlight. Yeah. Brent Hogwell. This uh, stupid dopey Mancunian accent, he just puts that on every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, he speaks well like Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we just, we got this whole world around him, we set a whole, what do you think about so that? So he had his head shaved, so <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So yeah, does he, would he think that, you know, maybe if he's looked online and seen me Ed, and he's noticed how round it is and that, does he think it's sort of been, sort of, you know, morphed into that <laughs> shape just for the show, just for two hours on a Saturday? <laughs> yeah. You would spend five <laughs> hours in Ed. prosthetic makeup like John Hurt in The Elephant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh, about him was made up. Yeah. We created him, we created well, Oh, because I remember coming up with Auntie Nora. Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. said, Rick, we need another character. I said, what about giving him an Auntie Nora? Doesn't sound convincing, I said. Yeah, and you said, what is it about? I said, well, I don't know, um, she fighted for five minutes and she's got a fanny like a split tennis ball. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, that brings us neatly. Well, let's put that to bed now. So, Chris Campling, honestly, honestly, we do not script this shambles of a show and Carl <laughs> Pilkington really is like this. If you want, we, you can meet him. We, I, I'd love to send Carl for a drink with Chris Campling. Can we do that? <laughs> and then he'll eat his words. Chris, if you're listening, honestly, this isn't a stitch up. As I say, I'm not having a go at you. It's a very well written article. Um, uh, it's very, very fair. <laughs> you're just that. complimenting on, on his grammar. Yeah. It's a very well written <laughs> no, article. No, no, I'm saying we're not having a go. He's he's, that it's not like he snagged us off. He's just, I would just love him to meet Carl Pilkington. People in the street come up to me and say, is Carl like that? And I, I so want them to meet him. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe he can send in, if he's online, um, he can send in five subjects for Carl to talk about that we couldn't possibly know about. Just so he knows that we just really do throw things at Carl and that drivel comes out. Imagine if it was scripted. But anyway, so Chris Campling, or anyone who knows Chris online, get him to email us and with five subjects that Carl can talk about. It's a good idea, isn't it, Carl? It is like I'm the elephant man the way I'm being treated now. <laughs> Sort of like I, I scripted that. I wrote that joke last night. Mm, are you sure? Is it, or was it yours? I don't know. I Carl, Carl enters and says, I'm like the elephant man. Hang on, let me just check the credits on the script. <laughs>
I'll tell you what though, Steve, that fan out of that, the elephant man, I was talking to Ricky. What? You know the only bit that's- that was normal on him. Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it was in the film. In right. the fi bit in the film, I was watching it one day, it was on, and I said, look, your favourite film's on, and it came to the bit where, um, he was being exhibited, uh, and he was naked behind the screen to all the doctors. Go on, what did you say? And there's a bit where he goes, um, uh, and strangely, um, the only thing that is normal are his genitals. They're untouched by this disease. They are totally normal. Right, what did you say? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the only bit that you'd want as an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit he'd won that sure, was, like, it was an like an elephant. Yeah, no, yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he got the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other stressful things. But so anyway, you're, what, what's the anti Nora thing? Sorry, I should, anti X. And yes. What did she- yeah. what, why is she upset? Well he mentioned her in Zoo. He did, did this uh, thing for Zoo magazine and he, and he mentioned about when he looked up her dress, it, uh, it oh, she had a- yeah, what? by accident, remember? <laughs> You were going around looking up your elderly relatives' dresses in case they for weren't people, wearing- For people who've not heard Carl talk about this in the past, yeah. just explain quickly again yeah, what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it at all. When I was a kid, right, Auntie Nora used to come around- uh, Me auntie used to come around. <laughs> <laughs> Is it there's any ambiguity now? Yeah. Me auntie used to come around and that, and stay, right? And I, uh, I, I'm sat on the floor watching the telly, right? <laughs> She sat on the sofa with a caftan on. <laughs> I turn round, right, and it's it was it was there. It was looking back, back at, at me, right, and we've we've mentioned this, and I just briefly sort of said, "What did it look like?" <laughs> and you know, a split tennis ball came to mind. That's what we talked about, right? So anyway, Zoo magazine when they did the interview. And she's the one that used to put a valance on everything, isn't it? Well, not everything, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I've done this. So you did an interview in Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, and like they said, you know, do you, again, it was like, you know, do you plan stuff and, and do you worry about stuff when, uh, you, after you've done the show, you're worried you've upset anyone? And, you know, I was saying, uh, really, I forget people are listening. Uh, and, you know, we're just having a chat with mates and that. I said, but now and again, I do worry, uh, when I'm on my way home from the show and that, and I'm thinking about what we've talked about, and I was saying, you know, the aunt, aunt in Aura in <laughs> aunt in Aura in incident. Yeah. Uh, incident. You know, like, yeah. And uh, anyway, so this was in there, right? And I, and I was saying in the magazine, you know, but I think I got away with it. She doesn't doesn't listen to the show, but you know, and I don't think she reads Zoo magazine, so <laughs> she's more of a nuts woman. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so my mum calls up. The, oh other, the other week, right? Oh. And she goes, uh, uh, wish you wouldn't, you know, talk about Aunt Nora and that. And, uh, I was like, oh, so how do you know about that? She goes, well, one of your cousins have called us up and said they've, they've read the article, you know, the article about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we don't want to talk about it, really. So he, oh, he stitched you up. Hmm. So do you know what Auntie X has made of this? Do you know if she was upset or not? Uh, well, she doesn't, doesn't know about it. Cause she, I mean, maybe she, maybe she, she's always thought it looked like a split tennis ball. <laughs> maybe you're just in sync, you know, because your relatives and stuff. Maybe she knew instantly. Even if you hadn't named her, she'd have thought, hang on, so I farted for five minutes once. Yeah, if that's not really it ambiguous, could well is it? Be me. If you hear like someone who farted for five minutes and's got a, a, a found like a split tennis ball, you're gonna go, I wonder if he means me. Yeah. You're gonna remember or that. Or Andy Jackie. He said, it could be Andy Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and he got in trouble. You know, last week when he was going to the wedding. Let's like, let's talk about that in a bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cure. I love it. In between days, XFM one hundred and four point nine. We've been too much with Carl Bill. The cure in between days on XFM. So, Carl, you were going to a wedding last week. Was it last week or the week before? No, it was last Saturday, right? Yeah. And he went. He said, uh, "Looking forward to it." He went. Now it's going to be boring. Suzanne was listening. Knows that the uh, the couple uh, were taping the show, so she had to get in there before he didn't she? She went up to him and said, "Look, when he you risk back to the show and he says it's going to be boring, he didn't mean you. He meant weddings in general." I love the fact she has to run around and clean up after him. It's <laughs> great, isn't it? How was it? Do you not like weddings? You're not a fan of them? Uh, they're only good for the for the people involved, aren't they? What are you talking about? You're getting free food, free booze, free music. Yeah, but. It's not, it's just all the hanging about and there's loads of people there you don't know. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got to make an effort. And yeah. You, and uh, even the bit that was important, right, when they were getting 
married, right, there wasn't enough chairs, chairs, cause it was, you know, all the family gets the chairs, don't they? So I was sort of stood Selfish. at the back. Selfish. <laughs> <laughs> stood at the back of that watching, and, uh, I couldn't hear what was going on, cause a woman was breastfeeding the baby. Oh! But what- what? How loud was this baby? Because he away. You couldn't hear what was going on. Yeah, so oh. it was, it was slurping and that, and it, she, she was like, I, I just thought, how hungry <laughs> is it? Could it not have waited? Because you've all got to wait for the buffet or whatever. Oh, yeah. I know. But also just in this. Well, that was true, out. wasn't there? What did you? I didn't know. The only thing that annoys me with weddings is the gift. Is the gift thing. Cause like, you buy these gifts, right, you spend a little bit of money, maybe, you know, I, I like to be a little bit lavish if I go into a wedding. Oh. Uh, well, no, come on, you get a gift, right, you package it up. And I don't know about you, Rick, but you, I like to see the response. When I give a gift to someone, I want to, I want to see that, the feedback from that, you yeah. know, this is very much, you know, I, I want to see what it is that Jane bought them on, on, you know, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. put my name to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, and sometimes I have to, oh, thanks for the, I go, oh, no worries, <laughs> no worries, yeah. no worries. Yeah. But you know, certainly, I mean, we talked about it before. But certainly, you know, it's the, the amount of the amount of money spent and the amount of time given to the gift should be correlated by the amount of the response you get. Absolutely. If I give a book token, a shrug is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give, you know, sizable, I want kind of I want them to be showing it to friends. If it's a bar, I want them to show yeah. it to barman. Yeah, you, you want to go, look what Steve Merchant got me. Yeah. He's the greatest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go to a wedding, you turn up with a gift. You could have spent you know upwards of fifteen pounds on it. <laughs> you turn up, you walk in, you say, "Excuse me, where's the bride and groom? I want to give him this gift." And some Bloke, normally the brother-in-law says, oh yeah. no, 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 the no, brother-in-law's no. mate. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. They're too busy to see you right now. Just stick the gift on this big table with all the other ones. Yeah. And, um, they'll get back to you. In a week. It may be six to eight weeks after the honeymoon. They may write you a note. They won't thank you personally, they'll write you a note. It'll be a general thank you. It's and general thank you. Your name in different type. <laughs> yeah, but it might have some vague reference to, you know, to yeah. what you did, but it won't yeah. really be personalised. Yeah. The set of mugs again will be in different types. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Steve Merchant, yeah. for your wonderful gift. We uh, we love mugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, a, and a photocopied signature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's not right, is it? Oh dear. And, uh, in, and also, uh, of course, as well, if there's a, and if there's a baby involved, you know, perhaps they, you know, they they had a kid out of wedlock, What's and that's mean? where they're getting married. There's normally the little baby signature as well. Oh. Like, oh, I that, like the baby signed it. Oh. From Paul and Sharon and little Billy. Be <laughs> <laughs> Ben. Be Ben, ben these days. Ben. I reckon. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Carl? How was the wedding, by the way? Did you buy Um, Suzanne sorted something out. Yeah. What? Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, actually, no. We, we're going away. I'm a week away with them. But well, that's that's your gift. Yeah. What are you going away? No, we're going away to Cornwall and uh. uh yeah, that's it. We've, we, we've sort of paid for the, for a place to stay and they're coming along and that. And their gift is to spend a week with you in a s confined space. They love it. They'll, they'll have a great time and that. Will they? Yeah, it's fine. Can yeah. I, sorry, can I get a pen? I'm making a note of how many times you say, and that, during today's show. And so far there's three. I've noticed three. I'm just gonna, can I just make a note because I think we can have a competition here. And <laughs> if times. you can predict how many times he's gonna say, and that, mm -hmm. the closest one wins um, some of the crap DVDs that we've got on offer. Which Hold on, tell me, tell me we've got ladder 49. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Landed Ben Folds on XFM 104.9. We've had an email, Rick, from Simon Whitaker. He says, uh, he's throwing the question to Carl. Have you seen the video for that Ben Folds song where there's apparently a monkey working the sound desk and shifting the piano? I'm so, uh, yeah, you wanna check that out? Talking of monkeys, um, working the same desk. <laughs> um, we've also had a lot of emails directed Smooth. at you. Yeah. A lot of emails directed at you, Carl, asking if you saw this program that was on in the week. The, I, th no, I think, I didn't see it. I think I it's know, called I know The Strangest, the the strangest, strangest Village in Britain. Britain. Yeah. Did he watch it? He called me six times during it. <laughs> he called me six times. Erida. Now just explain briefly what this was because I didn't see it. Well, it was, um, uh, a sort of a, an experiment. Um, for, I think oh, I can work out from the sort of seventies, um, and it's it was sort of run by, from what I can make out, mainly sort of German uh, Christians. Right. And um, what it was, it was um, uh, people with various disabilities or mental illnesses, uh, Down syndrome, uh, uh, autism, b bewildered, you know, and and they were living normally in the community. And there was three hundred people in the village. Half um, had some sort of uh, um, problem, mental problem or, or disability, and the other half were sort of carers. And uh, um, I mean, it was, you know, it was it was very very strange. And where is this village? Uh, it's, it's somewhere up, in this. It's up near Whitby, isn't it? 
You're right. Watching, yeah. Okay. But he called me. Uh, he called me at various points. He was watching that. Uh, and just started off. He, w he went, geez, if that's the beginning, what have they got coming up? <laughs> then there was two fellas, and it, 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 the phone rang, and it went, what is going on? And it was two, um, blokes who had created their own language. <laughs> okay. And they were going, what do you know? And you go, what do you do? And uh, what, uh, you know, it was an interesting program. Anyway. I love documentaries like that. But what made it twice as good was that I knew that Carl was getting confused. Yeah. He was getting, there was one bloke that went round interviewing people and he just have a string of questions and he'd go, have you had, ever had curly hair? What's your favourite animal? Have you ever seen a badger? All right. And, um, Carl was getting stressed. It was stressing me out. Cause right. he was trying to think of the answers quickly enough. <laughs> Is that, yeah, he was sort of saying, you know, uh, do you like mosaics and that? And I was like, oh, I do it. And, and the next question was coming in. It was like, it was like mallet's mallet. You know, that sort of... <laughs> That word association thing, I was <laughs> yeah. stressing it out. <laughs> but he said he wanted to go there. He actually said, oh, could I go for a holiday there? And I went, well, I, I doubt that. I don't know. Maybe you could go on a, a visit. You know, oh, that, that would be great, wouldn't it? To st for Carl to walk in there. But the thing about it, it would be like, Carl would be the ruler. He'd be the king. It would be that, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I mean, he would just die. I don't know. There was some of them were quite clever. Really? Yeah, really? I don't think he'd be, I don't, I, I think he'd probably be average. Yeah. I, don't th I don't think he'd. <laughs> okay, he'd I mean, in. No, I don't, that, I don't think he'd shine. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of them were quite good at some things, weren't they? He didn't like the, um, the angry bloke who punched them. There was a, um, this really sort of sweet Down syndrome woman called Nan. And, um, uh, she hadn't hung her coat up, and this angry, um, bloke was going, if you don't hang your coat up, I will. And he punched her, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah, poor yeah. Nan got it in the f neck from everyone. There was another woman bullying her, wasn't he? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you like the little, um, the, 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 the little dancing to a fellow with a woolly yeah, hat who was, was helping right. that if, woman. If I went there, he's the one who had sort of hunt down, so come on, let's go for a pint or something. Sure. But, uh... Incidentally, do you like mosaics? We didn't establish that. Uh... <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <sighs> what was his name, that one, that you, the woolly hat that you liked and you wanted to hang around with? What was his name? Uh... uh I can't remember. I can't he was good, I liked him, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. Fe he's the one that fell over, then, and then, um... Proposed marriage to that woman, didn't he? Yeah. I remember, um, I was on a, I don't know if this is alright to talk about. I mean, it happened, so, you know, not worried about it. alright to talk about. Everything's alright to talk was, about. But I was on the train, right, uh, coming from Manchester back to London, right? Yeah. And, uh, got on it, it was like a Friday night, and it was heaving, you know, like the, the, the last train is and all that. And, um, Absolutely chocker. Right? Yeah. So I'm walking through the carriages, <laughs> thinking, oh, is he in his seats anyway? Is he, is he? Anyway, everyone's like, it's, it's heaving, right? It's people stood up in the doorways, you can't get in the toilet and all that. There's not gonna be any chair knocking about. You know, so walking through, and anyway, I see this one empty chair sort of in front of me, right? I think, oh, why ain't anyone sat there, right? I'll just rush to that, get to that, I'll get myself a seat. Plunk myself down, right? And, uh, sort of, Turn round, you know, s see who I'm facing, you know, see who you're sort of having a chat with. Little fella there, <laughs> right? Little, uh, well, Down syndrome kid, right? right? Sat there, and, uh, he goes, alright? And I thought, oh, right. Not, not bad, but do, do you know what I mean? They're always talking, aren't they? They ask a lot of questions, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh, here we go, two and a half hours. And I couldn't get up because the thing is, that's obvious. Sure. Right? <laughs> So that's, that's like mean. I don't, I, I never want to be mean, do you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day. So, um, so anyway, so I think I know, I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Clever. Right, so I shut my eyes and he leaves me alone and all that. So, uh, so then, my phone goes and I think, right, what do I do? Do I ignore <laughs> it or do I open my eyes and see who it is? Anyway, I open my eyes, it's Ricky calling about something. About nothing, probably, actually, thinking about it. It wasn't even worth answering, right? <laughs> So anyway, but I'm awake then, aren't I? So he's like, hello. And I'm like, all right, mate. And he says, uh, said you're muscly. <laughs> oh, God! And, uh, right, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, why? So I said, I don't know. Just, just stand. And it's, again, stressing me out, because I'm thinking, why am I? Why am I muscly? I don't go to the gym. And, um, you know, I've, I mean, I'm not muscly, I'm in good shape and that. Well. So, uh, so then, uh, he wants an arm wrestle. <laughs> on a cram train from Manchester, so I've got another hour and a half of this. 
<laughs> when so, you chalk back, he'd soon have got up and left. <laughs> if you just started asking him questions, he'd have got up and left with the drivel you come out with. So anyway, uh, <laughs> do you know when you're under pressure, you're thinking, well, he's said that I'm muscly, right? All right, so, do I do it or not? What, and there's people watching, you know, not joining in, not sort of having a laugh and that with me, just, just like, watching but pretending they're not. Oh, And I'm God. at one of those table seats, so, it, and he kept saying, come on, I want to arm wrestle. So, and he was getting loud and I thought, oh, I best just have an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I best just have an arm wrestle. Well, what do you mean? Done, get it over and done with. I had to, uh, he's, if he's gonna keep asking, I had uh, another hour and a half on the train. Oh, God. So anyway. Oh, uh, my God. I'm, I'm thinking he won. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm thinking, were people putting bets on? It was <laughs> It was stopped and just as well, really. Was it really stopped? No, he, he, was it no, 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 no. He, he sort of, he was, he was winning. I was struggling a bit, right? Yeah. And he was really like, you know, taking the arm down. And then he sort of let go and started laughing. And I thought, thank God he let go because I would have made. You know what I mean? If I lost that, <laughs> everyone's in the train looking. And all the rest of it. Look at the It's suddenly serious yeah. to him. He's got to win this. Pilkington. Anyway. Pilkington. But then he just, uh, then we were chatting about favourite food and that. He liked sausages. <laughs> and I said, you know, he said, do you like sausages? I said, yeah, they're alright. I like a bit of Chinese and that as well. And he was saying, oh, I can't have Chinese. Not allowed Chinese. Why? Uh, dunno. He just said, uh, it's not allowed to have it. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, I'd, I had a good long chat about, about stuff and that, but. So you enjoyed it in the end? In the end, it was it was all right. Yeah, it's uh, just what is it? Mm, okay. No, but it's that thing, isn't it? It's uh, it's always when it, whenever you're faced with something different, yeah. it's always awkward, isn't it? And that's the thing. You're talking about him now, are you? And and I I think I, I did all right because everyone else was ignoring him, but yeah. I probably made his day pretty good. Yeah. We were I, nice bloke. I like the idea that that newlywed couple <laughs> are probably thinking that's going to be a similar journey down to Cornwall. <laughs> the magic numbers, forever lost. Uh, I was taken unawares because I was- I opened that, um, that thing, what is it? The confectionery. Well, we were sort of doing it ironically, like people getting shameless plugs by giving us stuff, but then I opened it, and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's all retro stuff, it's got a curly whirly, a fountain, cherub fountain, I've just been eating a drumstick that I didn't quite finish in time. It's got Brilliant. some of those little cola bottles. Uh, that's Hope and Greenwood and their confectionery, which are mm. they have the perfect summer gift. Perhaps you've got to go to a wedding or a um, barbecue party. And we've got some rubbish to give away now, haven't we? We have indeed, yeah. If only we hadn't opened that, we could have thrown that in the mix. I but, know, um, no, it's too good to give away. It's time for Rockbusters, uh, the quiz that no one looks forward to. And, um, <laughs> we've got, as usual, the bunch of, uh, CDs, uh, DVDs, I should say, which, um... Just tell me we have got another copy of Ladder 49. Ladder 49's right here. That's Brilliant. in the mix, yeah. How many did they send you? Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta, Ladder 49, the movie that no one's seen. <laughs> yeah. I've but never met anyone who's seen it. But it's owned by every single XFM <laughs> listener. <laughs> exactly. Um, also in the mix, uh, as I said before, there, we've got Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, mm. um, which, um, if you haven't seen that on telly, I'd be very surprised. Uh, French and Saunders at the movie, the, uh, the best of all the French and Saunders movie spoofs, which is, I think, on TV every single night. Yeah. Um, it's a very gay giveaway so far, it's isn't it? Wicked. Well, this got one- 49, the people in uniform, you've got Queen of the Desert and French and Saunders, well, the gays love them. You know how much a fan of, of uh, Chevy Chase, you know I love Chevy Chase. Yeah. Well, uh, we've also got here National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, which doesn't feature Chevy Chase. <laughs> it was so bad, even Chevy wouldn't agree to be in it, so instead Randy Quaid, who plays Cousin Eddie, it's him. Right. And on the back I notice it says, Special Appearance by Eric Idle. Brilliant. I mean, let's be honest, if a film's got a special appearance by Eric Idle. I know. It's probably not classic, is what do I'm saying. Do you reckon they do, um, always walk on the, uh, <laughs> walk on the <laughs> bright side of life? That's Anyways, it. that's just some of the DVDs which you can win. And obviously the, the real reason you should enter is because you go forward to this big prize draw, um, which is in our last show, where you can win some actual quality. Um, yeah, a, a signed, uh, a Matt Groening drawing. And if you can see him drawing that on rickygervais.com, it's uh, totally genuine. It's just there, him actually drawing it in front of your very eyes. Also, um, us, uh, made us, uh, flanimals, um, and a signed, um, uh, poster uh, by Nigel Tufnell. Christopher Guest. Sure. So proper good prizes. Yep. So the, this is the, I think it should be the last one to get into it. Maybe next week, the four that we've got get down to two maybe, and then we get them on the line in the last, uh, what do you think? Well, I'll be honest, I wish we'd thought it through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wish we thought this Chris Campling, if you've got any ideas <laughs> yeah. to how this show could have run, see, we should have we should have scripted this. What yeah. we said, we just said the go in a drawer, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, we hadn't thought it through though. Yeah, but we can't keep swapping and changing. Well, well we, we haven't done it yet. We can do what we want, yeah. 
We, we can only BAFTAs we've won. We can do exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. High five. Well, listen. <laughs> Six. Right, well, let's, let's get down to the business, then. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Rob, let's just, I mean, let's explain briefly what this quiz is for those that have only just started listening to the show. Um, basically- It's basically, uh, um, blockbusters. Well, you say that, Rick, but it's not, is it? I mean, that- blockbusters made sense. Yeah, it's well, just this just the thing, uh, Carl thinks he's a cryptic clue going, right, a fella is walking along and it, oh, look, there's the fish, what does that mean? d trout no, spinners. Some, well, of them, I mean, some of them are hard because they've, they've dug them all some out. Some of them are hard because they don't make sense. No, but they've dug them all out because they're gonna put them all on the website for people to play along with and they came to me for the answers and some of them are, are pretty tricky. I couldn't answer them. <laughs> So right. I love that. Anyway, um, <laughs> the only man that can outwit himself. Right so then. So the first one then. Here we go. Uh. Why don't you borrow some land off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher? All right. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land? I was changed already. Already changed. Oh. Oh. Already oh. changed. Mr. Boardman. Well, no, no, do it again and do it exactly the same each time. Do it again. Uh, why, uh, don't, why, right. don't, why don't you borrow uh, some land off, off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher if you, if you need a bit of it? <laughs> <laughs> what's changing? Okay, and what's right. the, what are the initials? Right, L.S. 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 That's a band or an artist. Who am I talking about? Hmm? Uh, second one. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, uh, uh, Sorry, he's got a sweet in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those, uh, those seabirds over there. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds over there. Oh, just, just those seabirds, it doesn't matter where they are. I'm gonna annoy them seabirds. I don't know what he's talking about anymore, Steve! <laughs> Honestly! B. B. B is the initial. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon-chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his yeah. dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. To, uh, uh, unbelievable. There's Feel another free. woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, right. what? what no, I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is this? Give us a, give, oh, a, on, give us a teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you later. <laughs> right, and, and the final, the you final clip. You don't get play. teasers like that no, on the other radio That's section. a head of a funeral service. Oh. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, the final clue. Uh, what the Scouse fella said to the robber who he found in his house next to his vineyard. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> What? Again. Right, so what the Scouse fella said- Right, this is gonna be a pronunciation thing. To the robber, he found in his house- Oh god, I've, I've lost his... the will to live. I've lo- I, I, I wanna get in that woman's basket on the street, we'll just be driven round the, the rest of my life. The initials there, A-W. A-W. Who is it? Alright. Well, Email in and that. Mm. Should we have also on the text 83XFM? You can win um, Christmas, vac to oh, oh, three. Christmas Vacation 2 and <laughs> Ladder 49. David <laughs> 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 Bowie? Yeah, watch that man. David Bowie, watch that man on XFM 104.9. Now, coming up, Steve. And listeners, I'm, you, know, you know, I'm talking to them mainly. I'm not really, I'm talking to you and Carl, really. Yeah. But coming up, an old feature. Knob News. Ah, oh, Knob News. The welcome return of Knob News. Yeah, and uh, Monkey News is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, you don't think you really gave that uh, competition justice, did you? Not handing out the no, email. Let's just quickly whiz through the questions again. Yeah. John's texted in, by the way. He says, "I never get any of the Rockbusters clues. Is this a good or a bad thing? Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good Definitely thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, other people do. Well, first yeah. one. Why don't you borrow a bit of land off uh, Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel? Or even Mr. Fletcher. Right. right. L.S. Second one. I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. Right. B. And the last one. What the Scouse fella said to the robber he found in his house next to his vineyard. A.W. If you know what they are, yeah. email in or, or uh, text Tell in. Tell us right? about the woman. What's the text? Quick. Well, well, 83936 oh. on the text. Okay. Ricky.gvase at xfm.co.uk on the email and that. Alright, and that. Mark Lowe and Dan. Make a note of that. And that. Right, tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our living We are there. broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like- Yeah, sort but you, you were just talking about- how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do- What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and uh, webbed hands and that. They went to my school 
And, uh, I go, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm, I'm going out to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big-headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales were, you know, because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so, I would uh, love them! Yeah. That's why I'd buy them. Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the metal something. piece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know. When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a was there a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there, loads was of weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call son. it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. Well, he got, uh, like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It, it was yeah. a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a- No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his like legs dangling over and they'd be going to like the, like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah. Sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And bring oh. out your ill. <laughs> and then just, people just throw granddad just in the back and go, yeah. right, we're getting four quid for granddad. But, but, but she's got quite... a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're very low, but they're extremely. Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but. She'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of <laughs> now I've heard, oh, still be here, right? yeah. I've heard I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot. Yeah. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Do it again and uh there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that. She That's was good. And that was the husband. He, did he, did he, was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the No, he just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's good. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well, you probably did, there, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, you know. But well, let's, let's face it, it's, you know, he's, he's not gonna be caught, cause why would anyone know about it? It's not like his son's gonna say it on a, on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work? <laughs> <laughs> just whatever, him and his mate, just, you know, if they saw something going on, they'd go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! That's, that uh, is brilliant! Right, okay, uh, coming up, Knob News. And Monkey News. And Monkey News. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. Signs on XFM by Snoop Doggy Dog and Justin Timberlake and a bunch of other people. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant Carpet. I'm just sorry, I was just enjoying You're that um, Hope and Greenwood confectionery. Lovely. I, thought, I wish I had something to uh, wash that down with, Rick. Well, won't you have a, a glass of um, lovely um, uh, Band Rock Station red wine? Oh, ah, lovely. It's barbecue friendly. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. Um, good, so just keep sending stuff in. Free, free stuff, it's free stuff. Good stuff. Um, Carl, oh. what are we talking? Oh. What are we doing? Oh, I've got something to tell you, actually. Um, you know we tease Steve about, um, I'm not ever spending any money. Careful, I'm careful with money, I'm not- Yeah. Guess what? He's- he's treating it like, um, he's nurturing this, right? I, he keeps running off, right? In the edit, he's having a suit made, and he wants it to be just right, because I reckon he's forking out quite a lot. He's having a suit made. Think of that, him. Let me tell you this though, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all flash with my cash. Um, it's very hard to buy off the peg when you're six foot seven. So, you know, it was a necessity. Carl, I don't want you thinking that this is the beginning of some new phase. Well, is everything you buy sort of made to measure? Or? No, I'm afraid I w if only. If only I could afford it, mate. But, uh, no, I'm off the peg generally, but. So what, like, properly done and that? Just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the full, it's the full, yeah, it's the full thing. 
the full works. Got to keep going back for things. They got that little bit of chalk, you know, the pins. That's where I had mine made. You know, I've got eye luck all the time. <laughs> Did you have to have that uh, thing done where they say um, what side do you uh, do you wear your member? What side do you dress? They don't say what side do you wear your member. That would hardly be a euphemism, would it? So they say what side do you dress, sir? It means what side do you little poke your little your little John Thomas leans, doesn't it, on a on rest, usually to the left, isn't it? Your, your little but left you testicles. Know, if I said to you now, what side do you wear? Hang on. Do you uh, know? It would be left. It would be the left. That's what it means. If, if uh, standing there, right, um, with no nothing restricting it or holding it in or holding it up, right, it sort of leans. Do, your one ball is sort of like slightly back and lower, isn't it? And your, your little John Thomas rests there, so it's left. And the reason they ask it is so they don't put the tape measure up on the left and squash your willy or touch your willy. So it's nothing to do with like, well, you'll need a bit more room, of, of sort of more material on that side, or. Uh, well, no, I don't think they, they compensate. It's just uh, when they put the w when they stick that up into your groin, they don't want to come in contact with um, with your. The thing is, I I Where's don't it? know what side I, I wear stuff on. I just sort of pull my pants up and wh wherever it wants to go that day. But maybe it's not big enough to sort of make any, you know, real decision. But, like now, I'm sat here, right, with my jeans on. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's clear from hearing you talk. No, but, but what I mean is if a fella said to me, what side are you, uh, what, you know, what side do you member on? I'd member? Go, what is this, what is this <laughs> the use of the word member suddenly? I'd, I'd go, I'd, I'd well, it's not, it's usually not appropriate. And also, I imagine in the old days they had big baggy pants and used to sort of like hang down. And now, you know, like with those stretchy boxers and briefs, it's sort of held up in a nice little, neat little parcel, isn't it? So it's probably not appropriate. He doesn't come in contact with your little snake. <laughs> so, you know. Did you ever, do, well, have you ever heard that? Have, have you, have, are you telling me a tailor has asked you that and you went, what do you mean, mate? No, no, I've never, uh, I've not really had one made to measure. I had one made when I was a kid. But since then, I've sort of bought a suit off the hook. But I've, when, you know, when you were saying about buying a suit, I know that question sort of crops up and I don't know what the answer is. It just annoys me the way every, I don't know, there's no surprises anymore. Do you know what I mean? People know. What, what do you mean? He's gonna, he's gonna go, right, I'm gonna measure you now. Which side shall I measure? Go, well, pop that, go on, have a look. <laughs> right, there you go, oh, you got it. You what, so you know, but do you mean there's no surprises anymore? What are you talking about? Everything mean, you say is a surprise. Everything no, no, but, you say, but what, every opinion you have no, but what, is a surprise to me. What I mean is, why aren't people just happy just to go, well, pff, depends, isn't it? Just, I'll just pull the pants up wherever it wants to go, I'm happy. <laughs> what do you mean? Why is this such a big issue? <laughs> but, but Carl, when they ask you this question, they're not making a note of it somewhere. It's not statistical research <laughs> to find out what the kind of common leaning is. It's just, it's a question so he doesn't touch it when he's using his tape measure. Well, just be careful. But it, but he is being careful by asking the question. But what's what's wrong with him touching it anyway? If he's, I mean, it's only oh, like hello. a slight. <laughs> <laughs> Fair but, enough. But if he just sort of, you know, knocks it a little bit, you can just go. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. To me, it's the same as the prostate thing. It's just uh, happening all over again. It's but the that, same. the doctor doesn't go. Oh, uh, what what side's your ass on, sir? Trying to avoid the arse, he kn he wants to go. He, he knows where your arse is, and he's aiming for it, and he wants to get it up there. He's aiming for it for a good cause. This little fella's going. Well, I've got to measure his leg. I don't want to touch the knob. I'll just ask him, sir. Do you mind uh, telling me where your cock is so I can avoid it? It's a big difference. But, but like I'm saying to you, I'd have to have a look first to let him know. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. I don't know. It could be the left, could be the right. <laughs> Are you telling me you can't? You don't know where your knob is without now? looking. Well, uh, well uh, how would you mean how about looking? How could- Well, you're saying it as if like- Should we have a guess? Well, have I'm a look, have a look and tell us where it is. And uh, what are you wearing? What sort of pants are you wearing? I've got my jeans on. But you've got pants on underneath them? Yeah. What I'm are they? Nice. Briefs? Or uh, boxer shorts? Uh, boxer shorts. Boxer shorts. Well, it's probably free, but the jeans are probably stricken it. I probably- it's, uh, I think it's probably uh, either in the middle, dressed in- dressed in- or just slightly to the left. Have a look. We'll come. We'll tell the. We'll tell the listeners after the break. Where? Where's Carl's knob? It's a good competition. <laughs> oh, brilliant. We've got to send this to the Sony Awards people. <laughs> Run, Snow Patrol on XFM. Well, big question. Where was uh, Carl's knob? <laughs> That's what people have been hanging on for. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Well, I can't believe people have been texting in. <laughs> hey, what well, guessing where it is? There's people saying, uh, is it in the middle? Is it in the left? Uh. Cost them 10p. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> ask the 10p to find out. Just wait. I'm gonna get out the answer. You don't win anything. <laughs> right? Let's right, strike it lucky. Right? Um. <laughs> Top, bottom or middle? Right. It's, uh, it was to the left. Oh! Yeah. I went with the right. That's annoying. See, I, I thought it would be uh, to the left. If not, maybe if it was all scrunched up, sitting out in that right, it might just pop up to the middle. Just <laughs> pop out. Like, you know. Sort well, of next week we'll, uh, we'll be finding out where, uh, where, where yours is. Where's, right? where's, uh, Ricky's bar? <laughs> right then, which, uh, leads us nicely into... Knob news. Oh, it's the welcome return of knob news. Right, okay, this is, it's very much like the news at ten, this, isn't it? Mm. I do a, uh, I do a bong, or in this case a schlong. And, uh, he gives me the headlines, the big, the big, the, the knob news of the day. The big, uh, where have you collected all this knob news? Was, was, there, was there a lot of knob news this week? It was, it was mental this week. <laughs> and that stuff. The way it works, uh, you, you give us the, the, uh, the bong, yeah. I'll give you the headline. Okay. Steve decides which story we're gonna talk about. And now on XFM, knob news. Schlong. Man grows knob on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Schlong. Man gets doctors to make him a second knob. <laughs> Long. Turkish prisoners made hole in cell wall to produce third inmate. Long. <laughs> Doctors accidentally remove man's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, well, can I straight away, can I straight away go for the accidental uh, removal of the testicles? <laughs> well, it's happened before, haven't we? We've talked about that before. <laughs> well, how did they, oh, what did he go in? For, for a tonsil, uh, I, uh, what are they called? Tonsillectomy? And he was, he went in the wrong way. What are you talking about? How can they accidentally um, remove his testicles? It says, uh, and, uh, um, it didn't look at his folder. Um, and the doctor said to the fella, oh, we've, uh, we've removed your testicles and we wanted to take out your prostate gland. So, that's, that's what happened. There, <laughs> there's, there's the story. This is what I mean, that's why I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Because the, all these sort of, uh, it's when they say things like, oh, it's just, we do loads of these operations. That's when they're not concentrating. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? When they say it's procedure. That's like uh, be, having a boring job that you do every day when you're not going to be concentrating. <laughs> I prefer them to go, this is a tricky one, this. <laughs> I know what you mean! I sort of do know what you mean! People, you watch TV programs about like, you know, removing someone's second head or whatever, mm. and it's like the best surgeons from all over the world. It's televised, they can't it's make a mistake. It. They can't go and he took his legs off by mistake. Whereas the fellow who's having a prostate it's like, oh, do you want to do it? I'm sick of doing that. Yeah. And they're probably doing a crossword whilst writing it. Of course they are. I've seen that actually in, in uh, operating theatres. They're doing a crossword. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I was just examining some of the other knob news, Rick, a little bit more closely. Mm. Um, man gets doctors to make him a second penis. I'm sure yeah. we're all interested in what happened there. Yeah. A German who persuaded doctors to give him a second penis has lost his wife after he showed her the result. Uh, biker Michael Gruber lost his original penis in a motorbike accident and doctors built him a second one using a mixture of skin, bone and other tissues. Bone? Apparently, the, pe the penis worked so well that he was even able to father a child with his wife Bianca. But Gruber was still not happy and asked doctors to repeat the operation and build him a better organ, to which they agreed. From his hospital bed, he said, I've got two penises, but no wife. I'm hoping when I get rid of one of the penises, I'll get her back. What do you mean? They, what, they, well, sorry, he had a, so he had two put on. What side does he <laughs> wear? So he's had both. So he's had three, then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the thing that happened with Hitler when he had one ball, but he had three at one point, didn't he? So he just got one in the other ball, gave his mum one, and got <laughs> the other one. Man grows penis on his arm. I mean, why are people constantly losing, losing their penises around the world? I've no idea. But why? I didn't realise it was a bit. What do you mean, why on the arm? It's just a graft, isn't it? Yeah, but put it on like your, your buttock or your, your side. Not you can't wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> <laughs> why did it? They've done that before. I don't understand it. Why not just graph it onto <laughs> the side of your leg or something where it's high up, close to where it should be? I don't know. To get it used to the environment. Like when you were like released a, like a, a duck into the wild. I've never, I've never understood that. If there's a doctor, again, you know, we had a doctor last time, this is someone who can let us know why they put it on the arm. So they can keep an eye on it, presumably. He's not, he's not going to work with this knob on his arm. He's probably in a hospital bed and under, under examination. Right. So it's, what, do you, what do you think? They pop the art knob on the arm. Say, come back in three weeks. What do you do, by the way? I'm a mechanic. Keep the knob. Keep the long sleeve shirt. Because the blokes go, why have you got a knob on your arm, mate? What are you talking about? He doesn't go back to normal as a teacher, sir. What? What? What is it? Uh, what is it, Simpkins? You got a knob on your arm. No, don't worry about that. Do your maths. What do you think this bloke's walking around with a big 
knob coming out of his arm. Why on the arm? So they can keep an eye on it. So it's not well, if he's in bed, just get him to not put any undies on or whatever and just have a little sly look at how, how it's going. Even in hospital, if you're in a shared, like, <laughs> little hospital room, people going, oh, I've had heart, you know, heart problems, what's, what's your problem? He's there with his arm out. <laughs> Got his knob out. Yeah, but I don't think it counts as indecent exposure when they're grafting a knob on your arm, sticking that <laughs> out of the bed. <laughs> Imagine if he's driving, he's just got it out the window. <laughs> People driving by. Yeah. The fact that at the end of the is, is that bloke giving me the finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the man grows penis on his arm story, uh, it says, uh, a Moscow surgeon said the man will, will be able to have sex in a few months. He said, w women will never suspect. <laughs> but you, what kind of a doctor talks like that? Yeah. I don't really, is this cock now, seriously? We, the birds will never know. He'll be able to go berserk. Yeah. They'll never realise we've got on his arm. That is unbelievable. Will he have a little scar on his arm, do you think? Yeah. I just don't, I don't get it. Like I say, 83936 if, if there's a doctor out there. Or indeed if you've ever grown a tailor. A I'm making you a shirt. What side do you wear your cock on, sir? To my left arm. What's that? Bit of stones. Yeah, beautiful. Lay it on me. Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I think, uh, the listening public would have enjoyed knob news there. Oh. So, I, I mean, it's, you, you, there, was, there was a lot of knob news this week. I was surprised. You know, I would have thought it would be hard sometimes to get knob news together, but- I would have uh, thought it would have been part of a bigger news program, but, I mean, I don't think we'd dedicate a whole, sort of, uh, you know, f like John Craven's news round. Yeah. A whole five minutes <laughs> to <laughs> knob-related news. Yeah. It was- there was other news, was there, in the week at all? Uh, Carl, it wasn't just yeah. all knob-related, you didn't just research. No, they're the ones that sort of stand out. <laughs> uh, there was Christ on a crisp. Right, uh, what's that? That's, that's obviously a, a crisp that someone vaguely thinks looks a bit like Robert Powell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what a load of twaddle, yeah. Uh, there was a bloke who can, uh, blow up balloons using his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, look at him. Just, yeah, uh, well it's, 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 yeah, well it's all connected, isn't it? That's, you know, you're just, you're just redirecting it, aren't you? Pointless bit, though, isn't it? It is pointless. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of downplaying it like it's no big deal, but it is pretty impressive. It's not. When was the last time you blew up a balloon? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not needed. It's not- it's not impressive. That's what I mean. That's why- But I you can say that about any form of sort of like bizarre entertainment. I don't- I don't think you have to hang yourself from hooks, but a lot of people go and see Jim Rowe Circus. I mean, I wouldn't. I- 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 I don't see the- But would you go and see that? What, a man blowing up balloons? No. If- if it was a mate of mine, I'd go, do that thing you can do. I'd, you know, to- to- to a group of new friends, I'd go, right? Then I'd get on with it. You know, it's, it's, it, it, to me it's, it's, it's below, um, a, a, an average card trick, doing something like that. Apparently though, he does make balloon animals with his penis, so, uh, <laughs> which is right. pretty good, isn't it? With his ears, so <laughs> it's always a snake. <laughs> yeah. So like a snake, I go, yeah, well done. Back to the right, right, now listen then, uh, what about another feature we'd like doing? What? Song with a story. Okay, he's been working on this, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, hasn't he? He's yeah. like a producer, isn't he? Yeah. But with a completely uh, round head. Just, just, you know, I was saying that, you were saying I don't like music, but I'm saying I do if I can hear what they're singing about, and there's a reason to sort of so listen is to it. So, have you turned into 50's dad? <laughs> what is this? Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, it's like, it's nice to have a song where you go, you know, I can't turn it off because I need to know how it ends. <laughs> you know I mean? it's, like, it's like a mini- right. it's like, like a, a mini film. A he can't film. sit through a film unless it's got a grotesque in it. He can watch The Elephant Man because he's getting a glimpse of this- he's waiting to see the bloke's face. That's all he's waiting for, right? And so, uh, three minutes is about as much as you can maintain his- uh, well, uh, well, last week we did, uh, Babushka. Yeah. Uh, you know, that woman dressing up, mm. sort of tricking her husband, then it sort of backfires and that. Mm. Um, don't know how it- Ended properly. I don't know if they split up or whatever. But this week, <laughs> this week, there's no follow up. Kate Bush isn't now penning the the, the sequel. Mm. Right, go on into what's this week? Pinball Wizard. Right. Okay. What's the story there? Um, it's about this sort of deaf, dumb, blind kid. Right. Who's good at pinball? What's that? So I don't believe he would be good at pinball. But even if he is, it's a lot to give up, isn't it? Just for that. We well, didn't give it up. No, but it's not like it's not like. Well, you can't even say to him, oh, you know, a lot of bad news and that. But you got that pinball. It's just a bit, bit rubbish. I mean, does he even know he's playing pinball? <laughs> is what I'm saying. 
Do you know what I mean? And it's not <laughs> hard, it's just moving the thing, you know, just hitting the buttons hard. Yeah. It's not like, you know, if he was good at Pac-Man or something, you'd go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but- Wouldn't scan, would it? <laughs> well, I mean, what, what were they thinking of? What were the Who thinking of when they wrote this? Well, let's have a listen to it. But, yeah. you see, now, B is a dark man wizard. It kind of works. Yeah. He, um, he's deaf, dumb, and blind, though. Yeah. That's pretty grim, isn't it? It's rubbish, isn't it? Well, don't say that. Oh, yeah, that's alright, I can't hear you. No, but it is, it is like, it's, it's just the worst, isn't it? I can't imagine what that would be like. It's pointless. I'm being a tapeworm or something, isn't it? It's just- <laughs> No, no, but uh, what I'm saying is what sort of a life is that? It's- it's horrible. It is a bit like being one of those creatures deep in the ocean. Well, look, look can I just- can I just answer your questions? It must be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Job done. But would you want a song about it and, you know, is this- is good at pinball? But it's not a real person, which- I mean, well, we, we were getting on to the realms of well, let's, people- let's with, But he is not a bloke that existed they sang a song about. Well, listen to it anyway. That's well, it's not a true story. I don't need to listen well, let's to have it. Have a listen. Oh, okay. Pinball Wizard by the Who. A little song with a story there about a little deaf, dumb, and blind kid. Thoughts, Carl? I just uh, it's depressing. Like I say, uh, I don't know why. Is he enjoying? Is he enjoying playing the, the game? I don't know. Let's get Pete Townsend on the phone. Carl, what are you talking about? I'm just trying Listen to Listen to the lyrics, right? Deaf, dumb, and rugged. He can't hear, d uh, no bows and bells. He can't see any flashing lights. He plays by sense of smell. Now, I'm pretty sure that isn't a scientific document Pete Townsend is reading out there when he wrote this song. He's making it up. But I d but the thing is, with all songs or stories, there's got to be a little bit of realism to it. What- well, do you know what I mean? Why- Pleasure. Why bother putting money in it? Just let him hit, hit the buttons if he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. <laughs> that is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yep. That is great. Yeah, oh, well, I think you've made Daltrey and Entwistle and the whole crew cr look fool, like fools. Yeah, they won't get fooled again. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. We're supposed to do it. I mean, of all the thing, I mean, it is horrible. We're not, like, having a go. This is what I always worry about when we play. But at the end of the day, that's what he's singing about, so we're not having a go. No. Well, and it's not a real person, it doesn't really exist. Uh, I say again, it's a fictional person playing pinball and always getting a replay. Okay? This what? fella's saying that he's good at pinball, he's played from Sherry to Bowie, but there's this little deaf and blind kid. He can't believe it. He cannot believe it. If you had to lose something, Steve, right? Uh. It wouldn't be money. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> your sight or your, uh, or your ears? What? That's too much, I can't decide. That's, uh, that's too painful. Sight or your ears? What about, what about you? <laughs> Intuitively it would be the hearing, cos I, I couldn't- uh, no, no, I think it's gotta be sight for me. Yeah. Well, you're always together, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, is it almost time? Well, I've got to ask Carl. I'm sorry, I've got to ask oh, Carl. Oh, sorry, go on. Uh, Carl, what would you rather be, deaf or blind? It, it when did this question ever really come up? Today. When is it- when the doctor goes, well listen, um, you've got our son, well we can operate, we can either lose your eyes or your ears, yeah. it's up for you. This- this is never a decision that has to be made by anyone ever in life. It, but go on then, would it, you rather it, it, be- would you rather uh, be blind or deaf? It depends where you live. So. I'm not even sure these are PC terms, blind and deaf anymore. Would you rather use your sense of sight or sight of hearing? Depends what- depends where you live. What, what do you mean it depends you where you live? Well, if- 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 say if, uh, Say if you lived in, like, a barren sort of, you know, Africa or whatever, right? right? Now to see, right? Sure. So, you could lose your, lose your sight. Sure, but, but if, if you lived in a woman's locker room. Well, if you lived in- you, if you <laughs> <laughs> Quite, quite noisy. Yeah, it's quite noisy. Yeah, like, <laughs> stop banging that door. Yeah, I'll have my sight. Lose yeah. my hearing. But, yeah. if it, but if you live in, like, New York, low to see, but a little bit noisy. Sure. So. Perfect. That is a brilliant answer. <laughs> Unbelievable, once again. Can we have monkey news? Oh, no, this this show's like one long monkey news, isn't oh. it? When you're tuning in to hear Carl Pilkington. I don't know, I'll tell you what, why don't we play a little short track? Right, what was your little short track? What? Uh, what is it, Steve? It's Green it's Day. Green Day. Like. Play a bit of Green Day, we'll cram in the monkey news, we'll play the ads, Justin's here, that'll be that. Right, Go on. That's what we'll do. Green Day on XFM 104.9 with JC Mitch and Carl Pilkington. We need the answers quickly, Carl. Rockbusters. We're running out of time. We've got right. Rockbusters and Monkey News to come in this fun packed show. Give us the clues. Give us the answers. Right. The first one was 
Why don't you borrow a little bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman, yeah. or Mr. Laurel, or yeah. Mr. Fletcher? Go on in. Right, sure. what am I getting at there? The initials Start. were LS, yeah. right? Yeah. Lease, lease a Stan's field, right? Cause you're borrowing it, that's leasing it. It's Stan, Stan Boardman, Stan Laurel, and, uh, it's a field and that, innit? Second one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. That was B. What are you doing when you're annoying a bird? You're bugging it. What's seabird? A, a, a gull. Buggle. Buggles. Right? Bug gulls. Uh, I don't- I don't know where to start, mate. Right, Bugles. don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I don't- don't third, know where to start. Uh, if one. we- if we had more time- <laughs> Don't worry. I'd throw him out of yeah. a window. <laughs> right. What- what the Scouse fella said to the robber <sighs> he found in his house next to his vineyard. Go on That then. was A-W. Yeah. That was A, me wine house. Right? A- what? A- A- me wine house. What? A- A- me wine house. What do you mean wine house? <laughs> it's a vineyard, it was a cottage in a vineyard, so that's what I was going to say. What was the clue again? A- me wine house. Well, yeah, but what do you mean? A- what, why is he saying? Why is it? Why is it a robber? Because the robber's getting in, and he's he's sort of saying, "Hey." But what's the robber got to do with it? Why is it just a normal bloke? I don't say. What? Why is he saying, "Hey, me wine house"? Why is because he saying he's, that? He's saying to him, "Hey, get out." Kind well, of no, thing. Hey, no, 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 no. I've already heard her name is anyway, "Hey, get out uh, me wine house." Her Gavin, name is uh, no. Her name is Gavin, "Hey, uh, get out me wine house." Well, Gavin Thompson got him all right. He's in Edinburgh, so he's winning ladder forty nine and that. That's safe. That's on the. And he's clear. going into the prize draw to win those. Right. Right. Just do. I mean, this better be a good monkey news, Carl. That's all I can say because that was drivel. Amy Winehouse. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news. Right. There's this monkey, right? Yeah. And it had been. Uh, do you know you hear about monkeys being badly treated and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So uh, anyway, it goes into this this home. It's fourteen. This monkey. It's called uh, Matty. Right. Goes into this home where it's looked after. What do you mean home? Just like, uh, just a little monkey home, right? Okay, so, so they Yeah, kind of, yeah, but they haven't mm. got any other monkeys there, right? What have they so got there? They've got just other animals and that, but, but not that many monkeys. But anyway, because, mm. because he's there on his own, again, you know- When you say monkey, do you mean a chimpanzee, by the way? Because you usually do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't believe that, um, journalist thought this was scripted. Amazing. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, so it gets, it gets sort of pally with the people working there and that, and, uh, it's smoking fags, it's having a drink at night and all this, right? What do you mean it's having a drink at night? How? It's all here. It's all here. Steve, I mean, we haven't really got time, but- Well, you know, don't say it's all here like it's proof. You've got another stupid story that no. someone has put onto the internet. Someone sitting at home in their bedroom mm. has put onto the internet. So he's having a fag, he's drinking a lovely glass of Bang Rock Station. <laughs> yeah. The wine eaten. that's perfect for a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's loving life. It's forgetting about its past and everything, right? When this this other monkey comes along. Oh, oh no! Go on, really. Go on. Right. That comes in. Something said. <laughs> <laughs> right. Forget it. Then. Forget, forget, it. No, forget it. Forget no, it. No. Oh, shit, Pants, that is only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce. A yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got you going to do? I've got to do As far as December and then that's it? Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? 31st of December, usually. Yeah. Do you it the whole way there? Go, always the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's when I'll do it till and then, uh... Why do that? Why just, why be conformist? Why, why end on December? Why not end on January the 31st? Weird that you should go, don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. <laughs> I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we get, uh, we get a clue She there. thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get, uh, we get a clue there as to why you, you, uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's, oh, you know, I mean- Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin, brackets, astronaut, has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. 
six o'clock here, yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow, I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. To fly. Yeah, I'd sort <laughs> oh, it over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in <laughs> Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today, and the face feels dry and spotty. Oh God! What's wrong with it starts you? off. It starts <laughs> off moaning. The first thing he does is start moaning. He wakes up and goes, "Oh fuck me! I didn't die." <laughs> oh, oh God! I'm knackered today, and my face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away, or it could be all the, f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> but what's I'm the Madeira burst. cake? The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? Oh. Well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's oh. one of my little pleasures. <laughs> oh, God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine from a man. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines, the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines, it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> <laughs> why were you looking at the gay magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just that oh, we were. were. No, I, we I were. You studied them. them. Yeah, because yeah, I was looking for it. UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. I don't think you find evidence about the world without <laughs> men's pants. Yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he, rather than he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but I, it you reminds right. me. You it want to be specific. Yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. More. Still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkey's fifty quid, alpaca's twenty pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, as long they as do. They of course the they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah. and I'm saying, can you get one to London, to them that is less hassle. Right, th that don't- th uh, Carl, that's not how it works. You can't just go and say, oh, I'll have one of them. They're not bothered. It's for charity. Carl, of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, all my plus posters and packaging, they're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages. <laughs> But <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite we've, stuff in we've here. We've got to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special I CD? I, I it just, it's amazing. You've got, you can't. You can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's <laughs> always having a brew in a calf. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> always been going to every news agency in London looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how like every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? 
Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because- I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. <laughs> there's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah, some- some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's- there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a byproduct. They're a machine, they don't go, what should we make this <laughs> noise, make this machine? It, it makes the noise it makes yeah, when but, it's doing something. But why does it make that noise? Why not pick another noise? They don't pick well, the who's noise. Picking the noise? That's a printing what... press makes the noise because it's the sound of the thing yeah. going down. Yeah, you so know, printing... a hammer makes that noise because that's what it does. No one's going, oh, can we make this make a different noise? No, it's- it's a byproduct. I it's, know. So there's only so many noises. I don't know what you mean. You said the byproduct is because of something that's happening, right? But it's yeah. the physical action, isn't it, and the way that that impacts on the uh, the surrounding air. That's what no you know how noises are manufactured. It's when, not a when, choice. When Stevenson's yeah, but... rocket came, and I went. I went, can you make it go, It's what that's the noise it made. I know, but then. Say like a new frog comes out. Oh, for f- what do you mean a new frog comes out? They find a new type of frog, right. it makes a noise, and yeah. they'll go, yeah, I knew it was gonna sound like that. What are you talking because about? Because there's only so many noises, nothing- no, no animal comes out and makes like a weird noise and you go, I've never heard that noise before. They go, oh, that sounds like a chicken, or it sounds like <laughs> a Ford Escort, or- <laughs> There's only so many what noises. What frog sounds like a Ford Escort? Well, no, there there can't be, be many because you've used Ford Escort twice <laughs> as an analogy here. So you're running out of noises. You've I come can't. up with chicken and escort so far. I can't explain it. But the problem it. is a Ford Escort sounds a bit like an Austin Allegro. So I, I don't know, know, yeah, yeah. And a chicken, you're ripping off the turkey, <laughs> you gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, chimpanzee, that is competition time. <laughs> I think my worry there is people might get confused with it because that jingle is very yeah. similar to the Monkey News jingle. There's aspects of it that's similar, yeah. Yeah. I just, be... Some people might have just heard that and they might have just heard chimpanzee and thought, oh, great, it's Monkey News, but Carl presumably is too lazy to have actually prepared any Monkey News. Oh, I've got some good news about Monkey News, actually. Have you? If you are craving Monkey News, then there is a special Monkey News poster in the, uh, in the CD, the three CD box set, um, the Ricky Gervais show, got everything. It's got the, the 12 shows and MP3, it's got the best of, and it's got an extra hour of brand new material as well. And um, the reason we did it on CD is because uh, some people were saying, I've heard about this, but I can't listen to it, I haven't got an iPod, I haven't got a computer. So uh, buy that for a friend who, uh, who can't listen to these. It's the perfect Thanksgiving gift. It is the perfect Thanksgiving gift. Or Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've, uh, we've signed, um, one that's going to a lucky winner. We did a competition, uh, on the last podcast, um, to give away one of the CD box sets, the, uh, uh, World of Carl Pilkington, and, uh, we've signed that, and, um, Flannels of the Deep, uh, the new, uh, book in the series. Can you remind us, Rick, of the quiz question? The quiz question was, do you want these? <laughs> okay, and what was the correct answer? Uh, it was yes. Well, we've had, uh, it's amazing actually how many people didn't realise that was, we've had a lot of people saying no, uh, I'm not interested, um, who are you, why are you bothering me? But, um, amazingly, Rachel Bolland from, uh, Glasgow has got the correct answer, she said yes. Now then, we yeah. need a new question, Rick. Yeah, should we give those away again? <laughs> so we get, let's give those away again, the same yeah. things again. Not obviously okay. these, we'll send these no, to Rachel. Different we'll ones. Separate you separate. get so, so you get, do you, do you want a signed CD, the World Cup Hilton and Flannimals of the Deep, okay? Plus, we can also add to that, Rick, the forthcoming extras script book. Ah, not just a script book, Steve. No. It's got some wonderful pictures, but that were taken by Rich Hardcastle, of, um, people like Ben Stiller and Sam Jackson and Kate Winslet behind the scenes. In their off-duty moments. And it's brilliant. It's really good. We'll put some pictures up on the website. Go to rickyjavaze.com and you'll see, you'll see what you could, uh, we'd be winning. Yeah. Yeah? So we've okay. got that perfect collection of stuff, but we need a new quiz question. Okay. Um, okay, th th so, so those prizes, uh, does someone else want them? Does someone else want them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright. Well, if you know the answer to that, then get in touch. 
podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck, it's a tricky one. Oh, good luck anyway, because I never read the emails. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the end of, uh, the second in this, uh, series of three special podcasts. That was the end of the Thanksgiving edition, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. See ya. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. They're doing a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, and welcome to our Christmas podcast, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering, Rick, if having done so many podcasts this year, because we very much started the whole podcast revolution ourselves single-handedly roughly this time last year. Yeah, that's right. Have we perhaps exhausted the podcast phenomenon? Is it time to pack it up, pack up the equipment and move on to something new? Well, this will be the last one for, for a little while, I think. I think, you know, we've done, we did, uh, I think 24 and then these specials this year. I think we started it about this time last year. Well, I don't know we? about you, Rick, but I'm bored of the whole podcasting thing, and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. Well, it stopped for a while. We might get back together again, but it won't be for a while. It's the, you know, we had a year. It was the year of the podcast. In a weird year, isn't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying. You know, when you look at it like that, when you think about all the podcasts that we've done, yeah, over a year, yeah, just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's Looking back at the year. A year in which we've seen, you know, um, increasing violence in Iraq. We've seen, uh, the advent of more fears over global warming. We've seen George W. Bush take a massive battering in the midterm elections. We've seen many major world events this year. Carl, what's stuck out for you? What event do you, if you think, oh my God, if you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Uh, the, the grub. That was, that was eating biscuits on my windowsill. <laughs> right. That's just a little bit more up there for you than the capturing of Saddam Hussein and his sentencing to death. Just because, you know, it's, uh, I never thought I'd see that this year. So what exactly- What, the capture of Saddam or the grub? No, the, the grub. The grub. It was just, I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. I uh, put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why uh, would you do that? What, why- why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Window because I'm sat next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. Yeah. No, and so some ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and, uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea. And, uh, I saw- Planned like, out. This is- <laughs> yeah. I bet, Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer and there's an insect that is see-through, but with legs. And, um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see-through things. And they were obviously all like, oh, I got biscuit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that, That's exactly what they were saying. <laughs> we got, got going, biscuits. biscuits over here! But I can't, that, what, <laughs> Come what, what, what on, it, Like I say, it was amazing because it was, they're miles away from what I'm about, and yet- Not that far. They're, but, but they're still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird. That that happened. I never thought that would happen in two thousand six. <laughs> and that's, that's you never thought that would happen in two thousand and six. That's what's nice, He's isn't it? That's what's mind. nice about the nat you know, the nature of the world. You know, we can invent iPods. We can bring out better vacuum cleaners. Um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up. And to see this see through thing, you do eating a biscuit. Uh, that's that's mind. where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of uh, anything. I've sort of gone out of my way to, to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's but happening. I don't know what you've learned. You've learned that, uh, a creature which you can't even identify or name. you don't know, right, you, you, you don't know what it is, right, um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that, what is that, how is that useful? Just because everything is, is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl thinks- Or where thinks, it happened or but, why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that, that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste for McVitie's in the same way that Carl's does. That's why yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it, they, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as, as opposed to just being- uh, yeah. Taking the it starch and anything. the flour, yeah. exactly, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, 
their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But they're eating biscuit. <coughs> and that was never meant to happen. So, so it's changing it. What but I mean is you might start getting fat insects. That should never have happened. You, you, you don't normally see a fat beetle. You go, oh, look at that, that's a bit fat. Put a bit of weight on. And now that's gonna happen because they're eating sugary stuff. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now over time, you know, they, they're gonna cause more trouble in the What evidence now. have you got what that they getting more violent? But Just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky, they come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of uh, attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now, they want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, they've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub having a biscuit, everything's trying different food out. You'll want a gatto soon. Well, in the same way that, you know, you, you look at people around the world, how they're eating weirder stuff. They're running out of, you know, ideas on, on how to cook food differently. And we're eating weird stuff. So our insects, everything's moving on. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish, memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. Everything's time. Yeah. Time makes you more intelligent. Well. No, they do. That's that's a fact, isn't it? If, if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more, because more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're all learning. You know what I mean? No. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the internet, right, and somebody had, had linked up a cockroach to, uh, <laughs> to some- I can't even be bothered explaining it, but, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, everything- everything's moving on. Yeah, but, but Pac-Man's like such an old hat game, man. It's like from the 1980s. Yeah, that cockroach is so Oh, he's God. A date. Get, Get a life, it. man. Hello, PlayStation 3. Is yeah, hello. Hello. Yesterday's cockroach. <laughs> oh. Fucking hell. What was he listening to? MC Hammer? Christ almighty. Fucking hell, Pac-Man. <laughs> Get a life. High five, man. <laughs> I was in the supermarket recently, um, just, uh, just walking past the condoms yeah. on the way to the pornography, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, uh, thought, you know, it's worth perhaps, you know, getting a stocking, you know. Get a stocking? No, get, getting some condoms. What, to put over your head? <laughs> You're not still doing that, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, uh, I thought it'd be worth getting some condoms in, you know, it's, it's, it's Christmas party season, and, uh, you never know when you're gonna run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and I was weird, because the, the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage. So it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. Because I took them off the, ca the the thing and I was trying to open it. So, because I th thought that they, they would, it, you had to open it. Try you know, it on. You, try well, it on. <laughs> exactly. Okay, they're just, you know, in case it doesn't fit. <laughs> exactly. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back, yeah. And, uh, and I was Do you do alterations? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do, yes. Five pounds. <laughs> and, um, so I'm trying to open this thing and, and this guy who works there, sort of this middle-aged guy who works there, goes, you, you, know, you have to, um, you have to take that to the, uh, checkout, so you can't open that yourself. And I was just, cause I, I don't know, I still find it very embarrassing, you know, dealing with any of that sort of, you know, prophylactics and things, the novelty of that is still very embarrassing to me. And, uh, so I just left it, I thought, forget it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take these to the counter. Cause you never, it's like if you get served by a, by a woman, it's, it's still a bit embarrassing, particularly if that's all you're buying. <laughs> you know, because she knows what you're up to. Um, yeah. you're gonna fill them up with water and throw them at students. <laughs> and, um, but it, anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've, we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought for his girlfriend for Christmas, uh, was it a, uh, Two pack. A two pack of Yeah, what was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about buy one, get one free? Yeah. It was a bumper family pack, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a family, obviously, that'd be, that'd be weird. Yeah, a family pack of condoms. <laughs> 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 One for the kids, take them down, enjoy yourselves. Um, but, um, so that was a couple of years ago, Carl, the famous, uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? Uh, not really, they, they were the early days. Um. Do you mean the early days? You'd been going out with her for about eight years, hadn't you? 
Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I just think that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so, sorry, that was a bumper year, was it? That was, that was a hell of a, she went, oh, I remember when, I remember when you used to buy me stuff, like condoms. It's gone downhill since then, Well, no, she your didn't know she was getting them. What I mean is there's less Of course prizes. she didn't. That's what, that's what I mean, though. It was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them her, and so there you go, open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on- No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult, is what I mean, to surprise someone, in it over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't- if, if you're- if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men, what did they get the second year for, for little <laughs> baby Jesus? Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like, oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself there. I've got to get- I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. And next and year, get him the gold. Step it up a bit or whatever. But don't you understand, what, cause what, I don't want to criticise you cause you're a lovely man, but having read the diary and read much of this diary, one of the things I notice is the complete lack of romanticism. The number of times Susanna says, book us a lovely meal out, take me out tonight, and you always write like it's a massive chore, like it's a headache for you. Oh no, I've got to spend a romantic night out with my girlfriend. Cause it's the same reason I don't like Christmas and stuff is the expectations. I prefer it. If I want to take Suzanne out, I prefer to meet her at the bus stop and she comes back from work and go, do you want to go out? But you Rather don't do than, that. No, I do now and again, but it's that thing of, oh, we'll go out tonight, I want to leave it to you, book a place, da da da. It, it builds it up too much and it can never live up to it. It's like how you, you know how like people make a big thing out of, you know, having it away for the first time and they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote! That's an amazing quote! That'll be up there with, uh, Newton and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. No, but like That's I've amazing. said, like I've said but a lot- But you can't just bring it on someone, you have to at least ask, are you up for it tonight? Just see how it goes. That's what I'm saying about Christmas. I might not be in the mood for it on December 25th. For Christmas, having turkey and everything. That's what I mean about, you know, in the last podcast, stuff coming round every year. Don't plan it. If you fancy a Christmas, have it. If you don't, just carry on. It'd be nice to live in a world like that. They say, you know, it's a world of freedom or something. Now it isn't. No, they don't, I don't know what that means. No, 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 you just well, make they, up things they say. They say. They? they say, like, you know, today's world is a free world or something. Someone said something along them lines when it isn't. <laughs> everyone's still being told what to do, when to do it. <laughs> Christmas is a big thing, isn't it, that we all have to go through. And it's stressful. It's You're not a happy time. You're such a miserable sod. You really no, are. No, but Christmas is a big, it's a big upheaval. It is a it, out of all of those special days that go on, Christmas is the one but that's- But what are you doing with your time? It's the question we return to again and again. No, we why, read it. Why, you're uh, visiting your parents. You're hiring yeah. a car. You're going yeah. down the calf. It's yeah. not like you're, you're taking your work away. You're doing yeah. some important neuroscience work. Yeah. And we've had to take you away from that for three days. Yeah. No, but what You're I, not doing anything of any value, no, Carl. But, no. But, no. What I might want to do, but I can't because the shops are shut because you know, they want to go off and celebrate Christmas. You know, it's, it's a, it's an upheaval. Easter's all right. It, it comes and goes. Do you want an egg? Not really. Don't have one then. You're not forced an egg. <laughs> You're not forced an egg. I like Easter, and everyone can afford an egg. There's no one being left out. Whereas Christmas, everyone like goes back to the family and they have a big meal and all that. And there's there's a lot of poor people out there who can't do that. So it's more of a if you're going to mm. talk about religion and you know the religious sort of occasions, mm. Easter's one that I'd keep. If you plan everything, you probably won't do it in the end. Whereas- Again, that- that as a soundbite is gobbledygook, mm. isn't it? No, what I mean is, say like, um, Go on. holidays, when you know they come in, you never enjoy them as much as one when it's surprised on you. Who how surprises you, someone with a holiday how unless you, you win surprised? it on a game show? How can you be go, bloody hell, I'm on holiday? Suzanne did it with me. She sorted it all out and booked me time off work without oh, me knowing. Oh, that's a lovely romantic gift. Oh, yeah, and nice. I went along with it and we had a great little holiday. Yeah, so, so maybe you should do something like that for her. No. She wouldn't like it as much, and I won't pick the right place, and I know she won't like it. You're um, one of these people that washes up badly so you'll never be asked again, aren't no, you? No, that's my job. That's the only job I do. Washing yeah, but up. it was a me uh, yeah. But to be that's honest, that's, that's doing me head in at the moment, because I've outgrown the sink. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> he talks about himself like a crab. <laughs> oh, God. Gotta get a new sink for Carl. Why? Uh, he's outgrown it. No, just He's 33 now and his knee's around his head. Oh, he can't bath in that anymore. No, just me back's been playing up a bit and I think it's because of the height of the sink. But, hold on, you haven't grown. I think I have. Well, you haven't. Bit. No, you haven't grown at 33. Well, it's, it's definitely something, it's just not very good. Subsidence? I don't know, I've just said to Suzanne, I said, this, this isn't as good as it used to be. It's not- <laughs> This isn't as good as it used to be! This <laughs> wash it up! Oh! He says he's got nothing in the flat, that's why he has to do a shop every day, cos he's got nothing in the flat. It's easier that way, isn't it? You don't know what you're gonna wanna eat. But that's why you get a- but do, you don't have a different meal every day of the year, do you? You rotate maybe a, a dozen meals, don't you? So you can get in enough ingredients that any time you go to the fridge and go, oh, am I gonna have chicken? Or am I gonna have fish today? Or maybe I'll have some pasta. I do that every day. No, but but I always come down to one of uh, half a dozen meals. You've got a freezer. We haven't got a freezer, have we? We've only got a little fridge. Oh, you've got too much time on your hands, mate. There's nothing wrong with that. So you've got too much time on your hands, boy. Uh, you had one thing, you had to do one thing this year. Promote the book. Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered, mate. Could not be bothered. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Carl in interview with him, I haven't seen him on the TV. Oh, he was on the TV, um, a while back on the thing called The Culture Show. Oh, yeah. BBC Two. And I'll tell you what, he was sat there, looked like a little frightened frog in a chair being interviewed, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not being funny, but his head looked fucking round. Did it look fucking yeah, round? Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally looked like a little fucking round-headed twat. Yeah, I'm doing that. And right. that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Did you enjoy that interview? Not really. Why? Well, I, this is, I met a guy, funny you mentioned that, I met a guy when I was in France recently, and I met a guy, he wasn't a Frenchman, but he was over there, and he saw me, he was a bit drunk, and he came over and he went, Carl Pilkington's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and I high-fived him and we agreed. I thought, isn't that nice? You know, uh, even when you're abroad, you can find someone oh who speaks God. sense. Oh, God. Yeah. And they shaved your head more? No. It's just the they way sort of greased it up a bit just to get a bit more reflection off it? No, they, they put a lot of makeup on it. They said, do you want any makeup? And I said, not really. And that's when I was like at the back where they could have done it. And then I, I went and sat in the chair and there's like a live audience there. And the woman goes, no, I best do some colouring in. And it was like, like must she be gave about you a 50, 50 people. She no, no, she, she started colouring my head in. And she was like, like had some brown powder, she's doing my head, doing the top of it and stuff. And I was going, isn't that enough now? And everyone's looking and sort of laughing to themselves that I'm having my head coloured in. <laughs> I'm sure she was doodling on the top. She took longer than anyone else who she was doing. I watched, like, other people who were on Well, she's got more flesh to do. When you do usually powder someone, it stops at the forehead. You always had to go round to the fucking back. Yeah, but the camera wasn't at the back of my head. She was just kept going No, and but going. the shine, the shine for the cameras that would get the in glare. people's eyes. They've got to be careful. Health and safety, the light will bounce off into the eyes of the audience. Yeah. Them. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't happy with that anyway. So I'm not doing it again. How do you cope with this newfound, um, interest in, in you? as a person. I've got an idea, Steve, by the way. You know, but my, the, for me, I want Carl to be famous so it gets him hassle in the street. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Sure. When they see him in the yeah, street yeah, with yeah, his little yeah, fucking yeah. round-headed face like a fucking orange. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna do a tour, um, next year, okay, called Fame, okay, and everywhere I play, if I, I hopefully play to, to millions of people in, uh, you know, I might even go to America, but I, I'll make sure at the theatres I play, or whatever, there's a picture of Carl on the seat, right, that they can put in their window. Uh -huh. So next year, I want a picture of Carl or in every window. Or they're with. Or, yeah, yeah, or whatever. But if you can make this yourself, put Carl everywhere. So, to, have you seen this bald-headed twat? Please yeah. make up the posters. Just send uh, emails to friends. Uh, absolutely. I want to see pictures, uh, on sh if you were own a shop, but a big picture of him. If you just, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, your own home, your own flat, get it everywhere. Have you seen this bald-headed twat? This is Carl Pilkerton. He's got a head like a fucking orange. Get it everywhere. I want to see the world papered with Carl's round head. Happy New Year. <laughs> He's only going to write it down for a whole fucking year, the useless That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. This is the last one of both 2006 and, uh, on any podcast for a while. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also Carl think it's the last time ever he will make, uh, an entry in this diary because, um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. 
But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but- Well, let's- let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. No, I have. I, I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. Hmm. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. <laughs> if it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided <laughs> coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yeah. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, you've got to un unlace them, you All mean? The, yeah, I mean, I, 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 since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. Just the way- I, I don't understand why laces- Is it because you can't tie your laces? No, I can do it, but it's wasted time. You're I so lazy. Wasted time. That gives him more time to sit around and look at insects how eating biscuits. How long does it take to take off a pair of boots? Well, it's ridiculous. Seconds? He can't fit his days as it is. No, but I don't understand how some inventions sort of catch on and other things don't. But uh, this is what I mean, he's got too much time on his hands. Sitting around at home thinking, why are we not using Velcro more? <laughs> but why there's one Velcro we? manufacturer going, yes! At, at last. last! He said what needed to be said. Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because <laughs> that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. But no. why necessarily reduce it to a toupee? Why not some kind of carrying device? You know, he could carry goods and, uh, things around in there, sandwiches. Yeah, he doesn't look like carrying a bag. Well, what about that? A little thing you carried around, a little Velcro thing that carried a pot on your head? For- for your sort of, like, keys and trinkets and money and that. Well, no, I've- I've- I've told you about that idea that's out there but hasn't caught on as well. The- the tie. Right. The tie with loads of pockets and stuff in it. Yeah, but you gotta wear a tie. Yeah, but- th but that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I've never <laughs> wore a tie because I always think, what's the point? It's just standing there in the way. <laughs> Can you imagine this image of Carl walking around <laughs> in his big Velcro shoes, a tie with an apple stuffed in it, <laughs> car keys, <laughs> yeah. iPod? No, but don't you think it's a good idea? Would you wear it with a shirt and collar or just a t-shirt? Um, no, wear it with a shirt. That's what I'm saying. It's an invention that will smarten up the world. Now, a tie, what does a tie do exactly? Yeah. What does it do? Nothing. Right. So I'm saying make it do something. But I'm saying don't wear it at all. Pop your keys in the trouser pocket. No, because, or take a bag. because the world is getting more and more scruffier, isn't it? When you look I back- I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. When you look back at, like, Victorian times and everything, everyone wore a hat. Right, they wore a tie, they wore a suit. And it was a nicer looking place to look at. When you see it on pictures, you go, what a smart world that is. Mm. Well, you can't see cholera and things on pictures, but sure. No. No, but I'm just saying it's better to try and cover it up with a bit of, you know- Cloth. Yeah. Yeah. The world looked nicer with- with more cloth. Whereas <laughs> now everyone's rowing about scruffily. So- so what I'm saying is, if we make the tie more useful and give it a purpose, it might come back and the world will look tidier. But a tie- its purpose is to look smart, really. Well, originally it was because we didn't have buttons, so it kept the collar up at the front. That was the invention. It was a useful invention, the tie. Yeah, that's It right. was called a tie. It tied together, okay? Yeah. So then, when we, uh, we had buttons that we didn't really need the tie, but it was a symbol of, of smartness, like saying, I've made an effort, yeah. okay? But now, that would go away. So now, you wouldn't look smart with a tie. They'd go, oh look, it's like a bag round his head with his, with his apples and oranges and his, his keys and his sticks he's making a nest out of. So it would- it would be scruffy. It would make the tie scruffy so it would defeat the object. So now when you're carrying stuff round- I mean, crawling on all fours because you're shopping so heavy round your neck, <laughs> they'd go, look at that scruffy fucker on all fours. Oh no, oh no, but look- look at his lovely head of hair. <laughs> it's Velcro! <laughs> it's a hat! Yeah, well that's the other problem, isn't it? I can't go back to a wig now. My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. It was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what, what I mean is if, if someone- say Stick if the you... video on of uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but but then it's still news. If you, News is something that you don't know, isn't it? If someone tells well, you that's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, and the, what... key, the key with news is the word new. 
No, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, it's it is. just, it's just information, but they tell you at ten o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong. Here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, cos you couldn't have, cos it only happened today. Bong. Yeah, but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days, it doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. Bong. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news though, cos it's misleading. We'd get done. It's called olds. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want it's Christmas and that, I don't want to bring the tone down, but someone dies in your family. Mm. Now say if you're away on holiday, and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's got over it, time is a healer. That's what- that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But, but, yeah. But according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't matter when you- uh, uh, there was an earthquake, when was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's alright then. Often the aftermath is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, you got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's alright then. Doesn't make sense. No, but the world uh, but you're is- You're not- you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset personally. Wouldn't make any difference when you- when they told you. Yeah, but it- it is everyone else's emotions that- that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? What about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a- I don't like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful it might to be know important it. important information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but- but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Yeah, I- I don't know if I like it. It's- it's- sirens, you see, I don't like sirens, do I? I've, I've said to you, I think it's a- a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's- it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it- like I've voice. said- Hiya! Oh, could you just move out of the well, way it can for be us? anything, as long as we know- it can be a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's that chicken noise- people out. <laughs> no, but it sort of makes you smile, but you'd- you'd go, oh, let's get what, out of the way. you're cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you. And you smile, because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> There's something <laughs> clucking in my way. Do 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 quack! Do 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 quack! Oh, that's probably a guy having a heart attack. Quack! <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase, Rick. They basically, it's a, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus. I'll skip Christ. past that because it yeah. takes fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, his mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose mum was a witch, just popped out <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> Just pop that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose mum was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <coughs> because it'll probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You <laughs> will be dead when this happens, don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that <laughs> little worry- worry hole with worries and that's us. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume wor that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. Worry. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in a million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails, because it made me get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <coughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm -hmm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dal book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think a anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nuts. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is he- someone took his brain out of his worry hole? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He sort of matched enough, so we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets strange. So strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the with the cupboards on either side. 
So he sawed a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine <laughs> how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So it's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> man alive. It's like- Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our, uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it, mm. which I've never understood that. Cos it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go, there you go, well, that seems cheap, there's no engine in it. So we bought this, we bought this, like, you know, uh, flat and what have you, and we bought the bed, and then, uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. <laughs> no, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, cos he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was, like, <laughs> travelling round. He'd just keep in the- in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke who drove round in a van with a mattress in the back. So I Uncle Alf, find. so Uncle Alf, right? It, well, tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him, he's the one who slept in a dinghy. <laughs> the one it's cos his mattress was in his <laughs> car! <laughs> yeah, why didn't he go, oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy, I'm not gonna go out and get the- not at this time of night. So mm. anyway, <laughs> me, me dad got me- got me his mattress, and, uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> And Suzanne was like, oh, I'm not happy with this, and I think she realised sort of what sort of family- She got herself into. Stuff. Wow, she landed on her feet when she S got you. So now she? she's always a bit touchy about, you know, mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> the old man down the road, yeah. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> Uncle no. Alf who lives in a dinky. <laughs> this is like not a real place. It's like fucking Narnia. <laughs> it's a children's TV <laughs> program. Unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress trying to find the golden <laughs> ticket. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, God. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with them, and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> Poor little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not the bees. playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but I, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't get on. <laughs> and it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the only thing he does is the honey. And it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Bees are kept for a very good reason, aren't they? What? For honey. Yeah, no, but like I say, you can buy honey for next to nothing. Where do you think- what do you mean? But wh where does the honey come from that you buy? Yeah, from- from some proper bee farm. Let yeah. them do it. All he's doing, he's not making loads of pots of honey. Mm. He's looking after himself. And the thing with honey is, it doesn't go off either. No, it doesn't, no. So- so, get ten bees, Yeah. get the honey made, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you- but you eat the honey, that's the point. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't need it. You can't eat it, and then it's still there in the jar. It's not magical. Maybe in your world, no. your un Uncle Fred had that never-ending jar of honey. But how much honey do you eat? What I'm saying is, it's one of them things in it that you buy, and you can move into a new house, buy some honey, and when you leave that house, that honey's still in the cupboard. You don't <laughs> eat that much of it. So get ten bees, get your honey's worth. <laughs> ten bees! Imagine keeping ten bees! Well, just get them to do- do the graft. If you've got loads of bees, they're not all pulling the weight, are they? Because they'll go, well, I'm not doing any, because I'll leave it to the others. No. If you've got ten bees, you know that none of them are pulling the weight if there's no honey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! They don't, no! It's not a workhouse. <laughs> bees don't knock around saying, ah, oh, I've got a bad back. Anyway, back to, uh, this reading from the twits. <laughs> yeah.
The news covered a story about a fish that knocked about 400 million years ago. Mm. It was 33 feet long and had a jaw strong enough to eat a shark in one go. Mm. All the dangerous stuff seems to die out, and yet things that you think wouldn't stand a chance, like worms, are still here, yet they have no legs or eyes. I saw a future human in the news article the other month about the future woman. She had three breasts. They looked all right. Well, no, that's not. Uh, I, I can't see how that's going to ever evolve. No, well, they say about how, um, about evolving and that, I read that, um, there's gonna be ugly people. People are starting to go ugly. Yeah, they're still gonna have bilateral symmetry, I imagine. I, I don't know what that means, but well, I'll, tell well. you, I'll tell you now, right? <laughs> well, they're talking about, like, people who are just like, you know, you look at them and you go, oh, look at the state of that, right? Mm. And it'll get to a point when we're all so ugly that no one will have it away and we're just gonna die out. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not true either. That, that is the biggest worry. Well, no, so- That's the world's so, biggest so worry. So as we evolve and we change, uh, our mindset doesn't change. We're still gonna- oh, I wish we'd- I wish we looked like they did a million years ago. I don't fancy anything. No, but look at, um, look how things do change. But why are we all gonna get ugly? I don't understand. It's just the air and stuff, isn't it? It's just, um- The air? Or yeah, the just, hair? Yeah, you know, the, the air that we breathe and stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, the food we eat. Everything's changing, and we're not going to look that healthy, and uh, we're just all going to go ugly. You've only got to look at some stuff that's in the sea, and you think, "Look at the state of that." What's and that's because that with the human evolution. But, but the stuff because in the sea is still longer. propagating. Yeah, but they've been around longer than us. But it's still reproducing, so your theory falls down. But they're deep down, aren't they, in the dark? So they probably can't see what they're having it away with. <laughs> If they were up on the outside, they'd have died out ages ago. Why? Because they wouldn't fancy the other stonefish or Yeah, because they're really odd-looking. I can't remember the name. I think it was a viper something. It's the, it was just a head. But Carl, a the reason- that's just a head. <laughs> it was well ugly. Watched a programme about the twins this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. They are mental. They did everything together, including the vacking up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, <laughs> I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat? just someone I've been sort of working with. Sure, a mate of yours. He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're gonna have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. No, if you're gonna have something new, make it- make a change. It's like that fella who was going out with a woman, and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Cause it's exactly the same model. I watched the final of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. It was between singer Jason Donovan, singer Mylene Class, and singer Matt out of a boy band. I had my money on Donovan, but Matt won it. I think it was because of his last task. He ate a fish eye, some grubs, a big fat insect that they have on every year, a crocodile knob, and a kangaroo anus. I feel like That's we've, uh, we've, we've come there, Rick, to, to where we entered. It was this time last year when we first started the podcast that, um, we were talking about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And you coined the famous phrase, I could eat a knob at night. Yeah. So it's full circle, it's just, the, the, the last series, uh, finished recently. And it was astounding that he ate a crocodile knob, he ate a crocodile eye, he chewed up and swallowed a kangaroo's anus, which I, I, to be honest, I didn't know was a food stuff. Could you eat any of that? Um, if I had to eat any of them, it would have to be the anus. What, m really? Yeah, more than the other stuff. I couldn't eat anything that's still alive. No, I agree. Uh, I, I couldn't eat any of that. I don't, I don't know under what circumstances I'd have to go, right, that's it now, we're not gonna survive, the ship isn't coming, there is nothing on this, um, island I can eat, give me the, the ca crocodile's penis. So it wouldn't bother me. Wouldn't I, wouldn't, I could eat anything. I could do almost all of the challenges on that program, but I couldn't cope in the camp. I couldn't cope with the lack of food and the uncomfortable bed. That's all that would do my head, and I'd drive people spare, whinging and complaining. I, I couldn't cope with any aspect of it except the physical challenges. I couldn't cope with sleeping with people snoring, the, uh, things crawling over you, uh, oh, I'm not, 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 not so squeamish about that, like snakes and things, that's alright. But the eating would, is, is ridiculous. It's out of the question to eat a worm or a grub. 
I, oh. It doesn't concern me. I don't know why it's, I don't see really what the difference in it. The texture's probably the same as lots of other things. What you would mean? hunger do to you, though, do you think? Would you think I would change? Do you think, uh, if it really was a choice, if someone said, and I knew I would die if I didn't eat worms. I that... think you would, yes. I think you'd complain and you'd whinge for a while and you'd try and put it off and you'd hope a ship would turn up, but when it didn't, you'd start chowing down on a bit of, uh, crocodile anus. But then where's the rest of the crocodile? <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. I say, who's been eating that? How come <laughs> I've got this? <laughs> you know, you're meant to, you know, work together as a team in bad time and yet I'm being handed an anus. Forget it. Let me starve. Well, thanks for listening. That was the, uh, the Christmas podcast. Um, we should say the winner of the last competition we did. Um, they can win the, um, the podcast book and, uh, Flanimals and, um, the extras book that's out. Still available. All available. And the CD. The three, so, the three CD set of the, yeah, of the best of the podcast? Yeah, Is that with right? With Series one? A, a brand new hour. If you haven't got that, get out. Well, maybe you've got some record tokens. Yeah, if you've got record tokens or book tokens, those are the perfect, uh, things to spend them on. Or fifty pounds from your auntie. Exactly. Go and buy one of those. Um, and the winner was uh, Stephanie Prow from the Wirral. Well done, Steph. Well done. Well, thank you to Positive Internet, the guys that host this podcast. That's the end. That's the end of the Christmas podcast and the end of this uh, this team for a little while. Yeah, it's been great. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye and happy New Year. And goodbye from Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, that's good. It's all right. What um, are you doing now? You got time for a coffee or something? I can't now. I'm going to the, um, you know the orphanage for, uh, terminally ill kids? Oh, yeah. I'm going down there. I'll go down there every Christmas and sort yeah, like, do you? En entertain them. Oh, stuff, well, yeah. I that's lovely for them. Yeah, no, I've, uh, actually written a song I'm gonna perform. They, they see the office and see that I sing in that. Uh, You've written a song for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could we hear a bit? I mean, what? I don't want to put you on the spot, but have you right, got, you've got the right. guitar there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, this for a, a kid, he's a brave little guy, he's only about ten, but, um, uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking, he's, ah. Oh. Don't cry, it's Christmas, Santa's coming soon, though you ain't got a mommy or daddy, Santa still loves you, and he's riding on his reindeer. To trample down the gloom So don't cry It's Christmas Santa's coming soon Don't cry It's Christmas Santa's feeling kind Though you know You'll never see him He's not just in your mind and it's not that he's invisible It's because you're going blind So don't cry It's Christmas Santa's feeling kind Don't cry It's Christmas Santa's on his way Though he's got a billion children and he's only got one day You've got slightly less than that If I were you I'd pray But don't cry It's Christmas And it sounds a little gay Oh, isn't that be quite moving for everyone? Yeah, I'm just... I mean, I just, I would ask you now to not play that song. Oh, no, too late now, they expect me. But I don't, I... I'm not sure it's going to be as well received no, as you perhaps hope. I think that's better than any gift, and I don't really want to give gifts because they're expensive. So. Sure.